and welcome to college football primetime served by Applebee's tonight from Reliance Stadium in Houston Texas it's the Cougars home away from home tonight Houston hosting the South Florida Bulls and just the third meeting all time between these two teams and a pivotal game for both these squads for various reasons let's take a look at the standings in the American Conference Houston at 3 and 0 tied with UCF South Florida 2 and 1 but keep in mind Houston with important games coming up next Saturday in Orlando against UCF and then Louisville the following week. Hello everybody I'm Mark Jones alongside Brock Heward Kaylee Hartung down on the sidelines joining us in just a bit. Now remember everybody in the American Conference the winner of the conference automatically goes to a BCS game. That is the goal for the teams in the league this year of course. Meanwhile only one team in the conference Brock can say actually in the country can say that they've scored every quarter <laughs> this year that being the Houston Cougars flatline they, they got some weapons well they've been doing it a long time here in fact you go back over the last seven years nobody's been more productive offensively than this program Houston and they do it seemingly the same way everybody in this state plays college football <laughs> Baylor A&M Tech everybody loves to run the up tempo and throw it all over the yard and they got a true freshman in John O'Corn a true freshman that's getting the job done with 19 touchdown passes and Deontay Greenberry Daniel Spencer number three and number four all over this highlight reel this season and that pass Pass game makes the Cougar offense go 19 passes leads all true freshman touchdown passes leads all true freshman countrywide and uh, perhaps coming off their best game of the season last week in that victory against Rutgers well so much to be decided this week from conference to conference from East Coast to West Coast Pac-12 down in the SEC and also in the ACC and we're going to get you ready for all of those gigs tonight we'll be discussing the big one coming up in Tallahassee between Florida State and Miami when Miami goes up the turnpike we'll also talk about the merits of the Pac-12 on the national stage huge game coming up a week tonight between Oregon and Stanford and two-time defending champ yeah what about them Alabama the top ranked team in the nation we'll talk about them and how deserving they are of being the number one team in the land but back to the business at hand tonight on the field University of South Florida starting a true freshman quarterback Mike White for a team that has struggled to score points putting it lightly Brock a lot on his shoulders tonight six offensive touchdowns in seven games is that a struggle yes. yeah I think so and you know that old ad is if you don't if you've got two quarterbacks you don't have one well this is now going to be South Florida's fourth starting quarterback this season and for head coach Willie Taggart you can't change out the offensive line and your perimeter players are who they are but if you mix it up at quarterback and they're mixing it up they took the red shirt off of Mike White a week ago he's attempted just two passes he's making his first start tonight and expect a heavy dose of the run game unlike Houston they want to slow this game down run it 65 to 75 percent of the time and let Mike then make some plays and play action pass Try and make things a little bit easier a little simple for him not too much heavy lifting involved and uh, Kaylee Hartung a year ago at this time he was wondering about who he might take to the prom he was, Mark, but he will have some help tonight in the form of running back Marcus Shaw. Coach Taggart tells us he will return for the first time since the Cincinnati game. This is the team's leading rusher. He went down in that game with a hamstring injury and has been noticeably absent in 11 of the last 12 quarters in which this offense has failed to score a touchdown. As Willie Taggart looks to, to change the culture at South Florida, Marcus Shaw is an example of his strategy to do it. He actually committed to Taggart at Western Kentucky. He then decommitted, wanting to stay closer to his family in Florida and attend South Florida. So in that first team meeting with Taggart at the helm, there was Shaw sitting front row, all smiles, until Taggart called him out in front of the team and said, you look just like you did when I recruited you, except now you're a senior. He questioned his development, asked him if he forgot where the weight room was. And so began a new chapter for Marcus Shaw at South Florida, turning him into the player coaches now call the home run hitter for this team and nothing like putting your starting tailback on blast daily in front of the entire team to get his attention and things have turned around for the better for him well Houston winning the toss deferring to the second half South Florida will receive and back deep Chris Dunkley number 88 the Florida transfer along with Fidel Montgomery number 14 to get this opening kick Take a knee. It'll come out to the 25 yard line. First down and 10 for quarterback Mike White. He is one of two on the season. 
five yards total passing. But you go back to him as a senior last year. He led his team university school in Davie, Florida to the Class 3A championship, their first ever state title. He's got a nice arm. He's a very talented baseball player in high school as well. And that's what they like about his game is his arm talent. He's going to have to get some help and expect to see a lot of run. You see he and Marcus Shaw there, the senior communicating. Those two are going to be pivotal tonight to turn this offense around. First down and 10. Like to pass, taking a shot on the first play and incomplete downfield intended for Andre Davis. Surprised they try and air it out on the first play of the game? No, I like that. And he actually gets exactly what they hoped to get, and that was a one on one. But that throw's got to have a whole bunch more air. You got to just relax. Your first start, call the plays, take the snap, the basic fundamentals. And just be willing to cut it loose. That's what Willie Tager wants with this entire offense. A little bit of that swagger, a little bit of that confidence to just turn it loose and let it go. Now they got Lawrence Martin, the huge fullback, number 96 lining up. Leading the way for Shaw on the carry, and Shaw picks up three yards, which isn't a bad thing for South Florida, right? <laughs> I mean, if you get two or three, Explain well, that line of thinking. Sure. Well, we walked out of meetings last night with the coaches, and there's a good look at Walt Wells, offensive line coach, co-offensive coordinator. Work in progress would be put in an isolate. It's been a real challenge for this group. And you said to me, Mark, now I've never heard that before. Two yards is a good play, yeah. but there have been so many negative plays for this offense. But yeah, just getting any movement at the point of attack would be critical tonight. Third down and eight. Houston, the most larcenous defense in the entire country. Leading the country in takeaways. White back to pass. And broken up at midfield nicely. It'll be fourth down. Thomas Bates, the DB, broke up the pass intended for Deontay Welch. You see the very first series, you're going to come out and you're going to play man-to-man. -man. You're going to put a whole lot of people around the line of scrimmage. David Gibbs, defensive coordinator, comes from the NFL. And you know what? You've got to beat us outside. You've not been able to do it all season long against anybody. We're going to stop Shaw, stop your run game, and you got to make those plays down the field. Matias Chabadi hunting, and we get a flag down at the line of scrimmage before the snap. Ball start. Number 26 offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. The South Florida team coming into this game off of a loss against Louisville. Never really got things together in that game, and they have now gone 12 consecutive quarters without an offensive touchdown. Damian Payne back for this punt. Fields it at the 36. But a fair catch is called. And pretty good starting field position for John O'Corn after the 42-yard punt. O'Corn, also a true freshman, played at the legendary powerhouse school in Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas. 6'4", 205 pounds. He's completing 63% of his passes. Has 19 touchdown tosses on the season. Stepped in for a starter. In the third game of the season. They were peeling when he got hurt. Pass complete, wide open over the middle. And a lot of room. Greenberry, Deontay Greenberry, the home run hitter, all the way down to about the 13 yard line. And finally wrapped up by Jaquez Jenkins. A 49 yard pickup. And that was a complete bust, unfortunately, for South Florida defensively. You know who the guys are. The game changers are Greenberry Spencer. We just talked about him. They let him completely loose. That's too easy. Farrell in the backfield. John O'Corn out of the shotgun. Going fires high, but a great catch on the play by Aaron Johnson to pick up about nine yards close to the first down. Aaron Johnson, a junior out of Longview, Texas, making the grab. Second and short coming up. Houston going quick. Four receiver formation. Farrow in the backfield. 
Bourne completes it. Touchdown, Houston. Xavier Maxwell working against Durden. Got the catch. Not complicated, really, with all three routes, Mark. You had a bust on the route on the first down play. Second down, you win. Third down, unlike South Florida on the other side. And we're taking a look to see if that ball ever crosses the plane. Unlike the Bulls, you're seeing why Houston's been prolific offensively. They win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. In three plays, they move it down the field. The extra point, good. The key catch and play, the catch and run by Deontay Greenberry. And the Cougars out of the gate quickly, leading 7-0 when we come back to relying on a scary Halloween night. <laughs> Dr. Pepper 10, the manliest low-calorie soda in the history of mankind. Bold flavor. Elevate your style. Introducing the all new Corolla. If you're into rushing headlong into chaos, changing the map with one well placed shot, dropping 10,000 ton sledgehammers, base jumping off of skyscrapers, joyriding tanks, and the glorious, mind blowing freedom of all out war. We'll see you there. More Tostitos Cantina chips at table three. Coming right up. This table is incredible. Here you go. All Enjoy. right. Mm. Hey, babe, how are you? Oh. What are all these people doing in your apartment? They think it's an actual Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. We're actually short staffed. Yeah. Put this on. Tostitos, Cantina, Chips, and Salsa. Real restaurant taste, wherever your party's at. They need more salsa at table five. Waiter. You mean the ottoman? Yeah. This is not just a laptop. They're not usually this thin, this light. They don't let you touch and draw. Not like this. This is not just a tablet. It has a click-in keyboard and Microsoft Office. This lets you run your favorite apps next to your favorite apps. This is the new Surface, the one device for everything in your life. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. Well, it wasn't Gumby, but the previously seen superheroes that looked like they were an offense for Houston on that last scoring drive partner three plays 64 yards eclipsing just 111 on the clock and Houston out to a quick seven to nothing lead and their new black uniforms here special edition uniforms on a Halloween night Houston Cougars at Reliance Stadium one of several quote unquote home fields for them this year. This is Dunkley out of the end zone. And a nice seam at the 25 over the 30. And tripped up at the 35-yard line. Well, bitter interstate rivals clashing Saturday on ABC. Quarterback Devin Gardner leads number 21 Michigan against the Spartans defense. With the winner taking a large step towards the Legends Division title and a trip to Indy. College football presented by K Jewelers, Michigan, Michigan State, Saturday at 3:30, 12:30 Pacific on ABC as we look at the series record between these two teams. Michigan State, one of South Florida's opponents this year that just dismantled this offense. 155 total yards was all that the Bulls managed against the country's best defense. Michigan State for so many years, so stout, so strong on the defensive side of the ball. Second offensive series for Mike White. 
It's a three and out in the first one. Hands it off to Marcus Shaw. And Shaw brought down right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Mark, take a look at this. You're going to see this the entire night until South Florida says, you know what, we can take in the top off and win a one-on-one. -on -one. And until you do, you're going to see nine guys around the line of scrimmage. You have to. Houston is an undersized group. Man to man, just line up the South Florida Bulls. And physically, Houston doesn't have the size and the strength, but you outnumber the line of scrimmage. Very difficult to get yardage. That Cougar defense with five turnovers last week. Pass complete to number 81, Andre Davis. Picked up about six on the play. It'll be third down and a manageable four coming up for Mike White. So it's always the line that an offensive coordinator wants. And Willie Taggart, the head coach here, he's also the play caller. What do I do? I want to protect my young quarterback, right? I want to run the ball. I want to run the ball. But when it is so grossly overloaded and they're begging you to go ahead and throw it and pitch and catch in a one-on-one, -on -one, that's the balance that Coach Taggart's going to walk tonight with an 18-year-old making his first college start. Lawrence Martin leading the way on the ISO play, but not enough. They're going to be stopped up for the second time short. Maybe a yard gain on the play by Marcus Shaw. Tommy Mark making the stop defensively for Houston. And Trevon Stewart as well, 23. He's fun to watch, Mark. He's a really good player. You know, a 6 and 1 Houston team that the country doesn't know a lot about. And to get to this point and to have the success they're having, they've got some fine football players. Stewart, the sophomore. Free safety, a freshman All-American a year ago, 125 tackles, knows how to play the game. Damian Payne back at his own 10-yard line for Houston for this punt from Matias Chabadi. And it's a short effort that'll careen out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Houston Cougars only took three plays to score on the last possession. We'll see what John O'Corn does on the next after this. When people think about dedication and sacrifice, they think of a soldier. As a way of saying thanks to those who have served, Applebee's is offering vets a free meal on Veterans Day. I'll be showing my support by playing a concert for our veterans. And you get to decide the neighborhood. Give thanks at thankyoumovement.com. Your most thankful neighborhood will host the concert. So join the movement and thank a vet today. What is it? What makes something smart? Is it the amount of technology? Is it the number of gadgets, buttons, and gizmos? We're led to believe that the more technology, the better it must be. But somewhere along the way, smart lost sight of its very purpose which was to make life simple. More stunning. More intuitive. More human. Because smart is thinking about what's on the other side of the screen as much as what's inside it. Introducing the ultra-intuitive M-Series Smart TV from Vizio. It's beautifully simple. No matter how long your day, or how hard you work, Wrangler Comfort never lets you down. They feel good and wear strong. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans are built with a U-shaped construction. They don't cut into you like jeans with a V pattern. No matter what you're doing or where you're going, nothing beats Wrangler Comfort. Wrangler, real, comfortable jeans, guaranteed. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Vets and active duty military enjoy a free Applebee's entree on Veterans Day. And in part by Vizio Fandemonium, where you can compete for points and the chance to win prizes and unique fan experiences. And Wrangler, real comfortable jeans, guaranteed. Oh, look at the uh, fifth annual haunted penthouse hosted by the Department of Recreation here at, at the Campus Rec and Wellness Center. Uh, Brock, that's kind of frightening. <laughs> I scare easily, have bad dreams. 
Tell you what, that uh, South Florida defense having some nightmares right now after that first sequence. And if I did want to dress up as somebody, in case you ask, bro, it'd be Ryan Jackson in the backfield right now because I'd love to be able to run a 10 5. That kind of speed, number 24, pardon me, 22 in the backfield. O'Corn out of the shotgun. Incomplete, and that could have been picked off. It looked like almost a miscommunication there, Brock. That's exactly what it is. And Aaron Johnson, he's just making his second start, replacing Larry McDuffie, who's out for this game as well. Second and ten coming up. McCorn hands it off to Ryan Jackson with nowhere to go. That time, James Hamilton stout up front. It'll be third down and long for Houston. And this front four has to be difference makers. They must stop that run game. And in passing situations like that, you cannot afford to blitz Houston. I don't think you're good enough if you're South Florida. We saw it on the first drive to stop those one-on-ones. Imperative, this front four gets it going. McCorn under duress and sacked. Back at the 13-yard line, great backside pursuit and pressure by Julius Forte. And it's three and out for the Cougars. Now, these guys look the part for South Florida up front. Forte, you're going to see 19 Aaron Lynch, some NFL scouts here tonight. These are the prototypes. And if you can get into passing situations, they do finally have an advantage. That's one of their mismatches. An opportunity to feast on it as well. This is a very athletic, big front four against an undersized Houston group that can't afford to be in those third and extra longs. Richie Leone punting from his own goal line. Chris Dunkley standing at his own 30 for the Bulls. A nice long high spiral. Dunkley all the way back to the 28. Got a couple blocks and has an alley. Dunkley on the move. All the way down to the 32 yard line of Houston. And the University of South Florida with great starting field position working with a rather short field after the 40 yard punt return defense special teams they have not been nearly the issue that the offense has been Maybe the best player on South Florida's team is their kicker this year with 350 yard field goals are already within his range but a nice job by Bunkley to set up his blocks there and that's going to frustrate the head coach on the other side Tony Levine special teams background really oversees and, and watches over at special teams group South Florida giving the freshman quarterback some tremendous field position first down and 10 from the 32 there's a good look at head coach Tony Levine in his second year here with Houston I bounce back after a five and seven season last year Willie Davis in the backfield and Davis gets his first carry picks up about two yards on the play we've seen Marcus Shaw Darius Tice also going to get some run. Willie Davis on the carry that time. Second and eight. Those are the ball at the 30 yard line. This is an offense that hasn't had a touchdown in 12 quarters and counting. Typically, when you go to the wristband there, longer verbiage play, probably a great opportunity for some play pass. On the toss to the wide side of the field. Still on his feet and finally brought down to the 22 yard line. It's Marcus Shaw. And uh, you sense any more energy down there, Kaylee? Mark, this offense certainly not lacking for passion during that Houston possession as the South Florida offense gathered around. First, it was Marcus Shaw in the middle, firing him up. Then receiver Andre Davis. And finally, offensive coordinator Walt Wells saying, This is man football. Man up. Got a great opportunity here, Kaylee, on third down and one after the seven yard game. They keep an eye on the big fella here. That's 316 pounds, converted offensive lineman. He's got to get his pads down and get some push. That's Lawrence Martin leading the way on the ISO, and they get the first down. Running behind him, Marcus Shaw gets it done. Great story about number 96, Lawrence Martin, out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Went to Merced Junior College. Watch him lead the way here. Got to get those pads down, though. That's one of the challenges. You're right. Hey, Brock, at his point size, guard, right? And he could dunk a basketball, folks. That's right. At 316 pounds, six foot three. Coaches say almost freakish athletically, and that 
he can raise up and dunk the basketball. Six touchdowns in seven games. You haven't scored a touchdown in the last three. You know what you do? You move parts around. You're on your fourth starting quarterback, and let's take a, an offensive lineman, turn tight end, turn fullback, number 96. Mike White to the wide side of the field. Caught. Incomplete. Out of bounds, though. Andre Davis couldn't get his feet in bounds, but the ball was just a little bit wide. Clearly out of bounds. And clearly gave just way too much room there. Andre's a big fella, 6'1, 200 pounds. And even though you have the entire field and you see Mike White, he's bagging, begging for his first touchdown pass of his <laughs> career. Stay in. Don't give up so much ground there, receiver. You fight for that real estate. You continue to press that route and let your quarterback lead you to the end zone. Don't take take it wide, take the easy road. You take another shot here, maybe? Go right back to it. Seems like he's got a little confidence now, the youngster. White on second down and 10, and they're going to call a timeout. With 7.20 to go in the first quarter, a near and close miss by Coach Taggart's crew moments ago. Working on his fourth starting quarterback. Talked about moving the pieces around and trying to find that right combination. First charge time out of the half. For South, South Florida's Florida. sake, you hope that you're not just moving deck chairs around on the Titanic. Mike, when you or Mark, when you are a big receiver, it is really important. Andre Johnson plays in this stadium, and he uses and maximizes his size. When you are stronger, when you are taller, you and you're lined up wide out here. First of all, you're a little wide. Get that split in here so you have more room to the sidelines. And watch him. He doesn't fight at all. He's just giving and giving and giving ground. And when you put on the game tape, it's never just one thing. When you have challenges and problems like South Florida's had offensively, you know, it's a combination of the protection. It's the routes. It's the timing with the quarterbacks, especially with a youngster. Just give him a chance. Fight. Fight for that ground. Second and ten. McFarland in motion. That's one of the guys they want to get the ball to. They hand it off and nothing doing. That time for Marcus Shaw brought down immediately by Oliphant. It'll be third and long after that loss of five. It's just a linebacker dog. David Gibbs, defensive coordinator, knows that he's not going to let these big fellas get going and get onto these linebackers. He's setting the tone. We've seen it all game so far. Derek Matthews, middle linebacker that time. Oliphant shooting the gap. You attack. 225 pounds. Matthews, a middle backer, is barely 200. Strong side linebacker Taylor, 210. This is an undersized group that relies on that speed. Third and 15. They have to get to the 11-yard line for the first down. Take it. Second charge time out of the half, South Florida. Wow, almost back-to-back -back timeouts. Well, the good news is, still got the ball and still got a chance to score here. College Football Saturday, Michigan, Michigan State on ABC. Ladies and gentlemen, the Toyota Corolla. Elevate your style. Introducing the all-new Corolla. The guy's a mess. He's got his papers all over the desk and his bobblehead. Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey Stuart. I was never here. What? Hey, have you seen Calvin anywhere? No. Hey, he owes me a report. I haven't seen him in over an hour. Yeah. He just vanished. Yeah, that's. Have, have you tried the cafeteria? Yeah, I've been there. So do me a favor. If you see him, tell him I'm looking for him. Okay. Okay. I, I got you. That was close. I appreciate it. No problem. Calvin?
Some players retire from the game and get soft. I get supple. Gold Bond Men's Lotion. Skin strengthening proteins plus seven intensive moisturizers. Dry skin becomes healthy, good looking. Gold Bond Men's Lotion. Man up with Gold Bond. I was going to go easy on you, not to hurt your feelings. But I'm only going to get this one chance. Something's wrong, I can feel it. It's just... Nothing's wrong, I can feel it. It's just a feeling I've got. Like something's about to happen. But I don't know what. Saturday, it's an ACC showdown with BCS title implications on the line as the Miami Hurricanes take on the Florida State Seminoles in one of college football's most heated rivalries. Miami, Florida State, Saturday, 8 Eastern on ABC. Well, Florida State's been extremely impressive, and Miami has squeezed by in their last couple of games against Wake Forest and North Carolina. Big showdown in Tallahassee right here third and 15 white on the screen complete to Dunkley but short of the first down at the 20 yard line Brock a win in the sense that they get a chance to try a field goal at least you had a sense that you were not going to turn the ball over there. that play call was either going to be a run something very conservative as we said earlier Marvin Kloss may be the best player on this offense. 10 for 11 this season, made 10 consecutive field goals. you got to get points to pay off that good punt return. He's knocked through field goals three times this year from over 50 yards. Born in Germany, moved to America when he was young. His father, a former German professional soccer player. And he drills it through. What would you expect from a field goal kicker that benches 400 pounds? Strong effort. Americans, we develop the things that keep our country on the move. And at Valero, we make the fuels that make them all go. Just stop by and you'll find high quality fuel for your cars and trucks, plus great tasting snacks and drinks for you. Everything you need to get you where you want to be, coast to coast. We're Valero, our nation's largest refiner, and we're helping keep America moving. Sometimes you need a car when you don't have a car. And now with Enterprise Car Share, you can share one of our cars 24-7. One low hourly rate covers everything, giving you the freedom to go where you want, when you want. That's the Enterprise way. Energizer Max batteries are designed to hold power for up to 10 years. With the help of Power Seal technology, you'll always have power when you need it most. That's positive energy. An outstanding lineage of quarterbacks at the University of Houston Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Weyer, David Klingler from 88 to 91, Kevin Cobb, now with the Buffalo Bills, and Case Keenum, played six years here, had the injury, came back as a six-year senior, now with the local team, the Houston Texans, and he's going to get the start for the team that is struggling right now, Brock, the Houston Texans. And he's earned it. He's earned everything in his career, one of those... Many Houston Cougar quarterbacks that just pitch and catch. And Tony Levine, head coach, said, man, we got a lot of guys in this state that can run 4-4. Four, four. They love to catch a lot of passes. Not hard to recruit wide receivers here. And typically, when good wide receivers can be found, you're going to find a guy that likes to sling it to them as well. Marcus Ayers back deep. Now he's going to take it out. Okay. Ayers. Flag down, airs down at the 26-yard line. Another late flag thrown. During the return, legal block in the back. Number 30 of the return team. Penalty's half is distance to the goal line. First down. This might be it right there. You know how those referees make that call oh. how that guy falls how that guy being blocked if he falls to the side you, you, you can get away with that at times when you hit from you know, the side or near the back depending on how that player falls but the minute he starts to fall forward that's a block in the back that's an easy call first down and 10 they move it back to about the six yard line Kenneth Farrow in the ball game the pass complete to Greenberry and Flush that out of bounds for a gain of about three on the play. This Houston running game had to replace the defection of Charles Sims, who 
chose to transfer to West Virginia University. Uh, Sims accounted for over 1,200 of their all-purpose yards last season. So Greenberry, one of those variables, trying to make up for the difference. Second and six on the screen, incomplete for Spencer, who's another one of those key pieces offensively, Brock. Yeah, and you're seeing a little bit of adjustment here from Chuck Bresnahan, defensive coordinator, longtime NFL assistant coach. Started playing that man early. Has gone to a little bit more zone the last couple drives. And it was very, very easy, that opening drive. And now Houston with the three and out and staring down a third and six. Good look there. Chuck Bresnahan excited to be back coaching college football. A point on the move completes it. Out to the 25-yard line. That's Markeith Ambles with his first reception tonight and a first down conversion on third down for the Cougars. A 16-yard gain on the play. One completes it out of the backfield hard running by Kenneth Farrell who is one of the leaders on this team offensively a five yard gain on the play Farrell actually missed the rice in the UT San Antonio games due to an ankle injury back in healthy now second and five and off into the boundary but nowhere to go good tackle on Jackson by Watson sets up a third down and about three to go you know, South Florida is going to continue to benefit their offense well they've got to get off the field it really is important Houston is staring inside their own 10 they get the big third down conversion these are the third down conversions you play good solid defense early to find a way to get yourself off the field here and have to tighten the coverage up just a little bit They fake the fly sweep over the middle complete to Spencer. Made a couple of moves, got the first down and tripped up at the 38-yard line by Durden. Durden, one of the better cover corners, but he gains four on the play. And it's a first down. What do you make of Houston's intensity? You know, there was a thought they might be looking ahead a little bit to those two big games coming up, Brock. No, I don't think so. Okay. No, I, I think this is a very well-coached group that I see on tape. Another completion to Greenberry. Picks up about five on the play. We talked about the two big ones coming up next week in Orlando. We'll be there to call it for you, Central Florida and then Louisville. But you say they've come out with the requisite amount of energy here? Well, you love the, the opening drive offensively. And, yeah, defensively, they are flying around three different possessions. And, yeah, you give up the field goal, but that was set up on special teams. They set up the screen nicely. Farrow made one nice move, but... Made another one, and boy, what a little bit of magic there. And you said it earlier, Jackson is the shiftier of the two. He's the 10 500 meter runner. Farrow is the blue collar, pass blocker, downhill runner, much more physical of the two. And he's showing you he can, he can two step a little bit in this state as well. <laughs> Third and short, two to go. Hand it off to Farrow, gets the first down and then some. Nice cutback in the open field. Farrow. To the 24. Finally brought down by Lewis. And they got gashed up front, Brock. Now it's just patience. That's now three consecutive third downs. You take what's there. And that's what's debilitating defensively. You get yourself to a chance to get off the field. And this offense showing you why they score 40 a game. 29 yard pickup. O'Corn into traffic and incomplete. Intended for Demarcus Ayers. Thing hung up there a long time. Yeah, that's a force. That's one you get away with. And this is one that South Florida's got to find a way to bring in. You're oh so close there. That's Nate Godwin, the true freshman. South Florida, like Houston, playing a number of true freshmen. Got to track that ball. South Florida, if they're going to stay in this game, it's going to be defense special teams and get your own takeaways against you know, the best team in college football with 27 on the other side. Ryan Jackson in motion out of the backfield. O'Corn takes off on his own. Put his hat down. And comes up about two yards short. It'll be third down and about that much to go. Mark Joyce making the stop. It's now the fourth third and short on this drive. Last time it was 
Farrell with the conversion. He comes back into the ball game. Approaching two minutes to go in the first quarter. They hand it off into the boundary. That's Jackson, the speed guy, and he gets the first down. A missed tackle on the play, though, by Mark Joyce. Second leading tackler. And this is too bad. You're right there to find a way to force the field goal, and you don't do it. Poor technique. You're reaching and grabbing. You're guessing, and you can't guess defensively. Five-yard gain in the first down. And it looked like Aaron Lynch was trying to get off the field. Five-yard penalty, first down. Aaron Lynch, the Notre Dame transfer, yet to make a, an impact here early in the game. Frustrated head coach Willie Taggart, a Tampa Bay area native. Hand off into the boundary. Farrell with nowhere to go, brought down. That's the squatty body that we saw earlier. That's Todd Chandler, the redshirt junior. He can't be six foot tall, and look how stout he is. <laughs> Showing you tremendous effort. He was actually a four star recruit. Said yes to South Florida over both LSU and Florida four years ago. Loss of three on the play. Play fake, incomplete. There was some contact and a flag. Greenberry got leveled at the two yard line. I mean, he got stuck. Pest interference, number 34 of the defense. Penalty results in an automatic first down. D.D. Lattimore, the perpetrator that time. That one was pretty obvious, Brock. Remember I told you about the bodies flying around? <laughs> <laughs> that one was pretty easy to see. First and goal from the three-yard line. Farrow in the backfield, four receivers on the play. The shovel pass. Farrow, touchdown Cougars. Lattimore had a shot at bringing him down, but missed. What is every defensive coach that we talk to on the college football road? And, ooh, that's not a good sign. You like the energy. You like some of the passion. Willie Taggart saying, hey, no more excuses. Trying to hold guys accountable. But what does every defensive coordinator who plays against the spread offense tell us every single week? You've got to tackle in the open field. You've got to be able to break down. And in those one-on-one -on -one situations, get the running back receivers to the ground. The extra point good. And for Farrow, that's his first touchdown catch of the season and the second of his career. Good call here by offensive coordinator Doug Meacham. Well, that's two. I, I don't know what Didi's fired up and bumping into his guys about. That's once again, your two leading tacklers, your two seniors, your captain and Dee Lattimore, Mark Joyce played a ton of ball here as well. Your two leading tacklers unable to break down and make that tackle. Now, Coach Taggart told us about trying to change the culture and get away from the finger pointing and trying to get these guys to really care about each other as teammates beyond the football field and talked of Bonding team bonding exercises and experiences rooming players together from different positions the receivers with the offensive linemen guys that Brock you say normally wouldn't room together and uh, it really doesn't mean much if on the field it doesn't translate had to be a level of accountability I think that was the biggest thing especially amongst the veterans in the senior class and a lot of energy being expent by Lattimore by Shaw a lot of barking you got to get it done on the field and all of that is wonderful, and it's great to have team bonding. It's great to have team meetings. But ultimately, you got to break down and make those tackles. Dish it out. That was the longest drive by Houston this season in terms of plays. 14. Using a 4.52 on the clock and 19 yards. Out of the end zone, it's Chris Dunkley. And Dunkley chopped down. Does a little helicopter spin at the 24. Let's go back to Scott in the studio. 
Look, thanks time now for the Coors Light. Cold hard facts. All pro Alden Smith has been activated to the San Francisco 49er roster off the non-injury list. Been going undergoing rehab in an inpatient facility. Niners are on a bye. Source tells Adam Schefter that he could play as early as the 10th against Carolina, though they want to bring him along slowly. Back to Mark and Mark in Houston, fellas. All right, Scott, first down and 10 from the 23-yard line for South Florida. Time winding down here in the first quarter. Darius Tice in the backfield, but a pass instead to the edges. Andre Davis makes the reception, picks up about four on the play. William Jackson making the tackle. What do you think of the work of quarterback Mike White, the true freshman so far? Just got to find completions. I like that. That's that's a run pass option there. Everybody, you call the run play, and I like it. That that's an adjustment. What you're seeing there, Willie Taggart's got his eyes upstairs. What are they doing? How many guys are they putting around the line of scrimmage? So you give your young quarterback a run pass option. You have the run called, and if they leave it one-on-one -on -one outside, then you just rise up, throw it out to your wide receiver. Just find a way to get in rhythm by finding those completions. Martin and Tice lining up out of the eye. It's going to be Tice. Nowhere to go. Tough getting some push up front. Speed is beating size over and over and over in this first quarter. And unfortunately, it's been a lot of the story this season for South Florida offensively. And for the Bulls, they've now gone 13 quarters without an offensive touchdown. If you're going to hoop, hoop like a four-time MVP. If you're going to march to your own beat, make it a beat that posterizes the trombone section. If you're going to post a video, dominate the post. If you're going to sport it, own it. And if you're going to put in the work to show the world who you are, you're going to get thirsty. Then drink a Sprite. Sprite for the thirsty. Elevate your style. Introducing the all new Corolla. There's a couple of reasons Ryobi is number one. We have over 50 products that work off one 18 volt battery. Plus, Ryobi offers more value in selection than anyone. And now there's new Lithium and Lithium Plus, our most powerful and longest lasting batteries ever. So you can knock out that to do list all before kickoff. Ryobi One Plus, the one system that delivers more. Available only one place, the Home Depot. Now pick up a special buy lithium ion drill kit for just $79. Introducing the Rack Roll Down, the lowest prices ever at Rena Center. We've rolled down prices on your favorite brands throughout the store. Everyone's pre approved for our new lower prices, so hurry in and save like never before at Rena Center. Wow. That feels wow. Oral-B Deep Sweep, featuring three cleaning zones that remove up to 100% more plaque than a regular manual brush. Guaranteed wow from Oral-B, number one dentist-recommended toothbrush brand worldwide. There's only one car company in America that's never made a single car. And while you won't find Firestone cars on any showroom floor, they're out there running better, faster, stronger, longer. No, we don't build cars. But make no mistake, Firestone is a car company. So whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Customer Aaron Swenson ordered shoes from us online, but they didn't fit. Customer's not happy, I'm not happy. Sales go down, I'm not happy. Merch comes back, I'm not happy. Use UPS, they make returns easy. Unhappy customer becomes happy customer. Then, repeat customer. Easy returns, I'm happy. Repeat customers, I'm happy. Sales go up, I'm happy. I ordered another pair. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. happy. I'm happy. 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 I love logistics. Heat Nets at 8 Eastern. Spurs Lakers at 10.30. Tomorrow. And welcome back, everyone. The city of Houston, home of the energy industry. A glow at night and inside Reliant 
Stadium. I think they're doing the chicken dance. Home team leading 14 to 3 here in the third meeting all time between South Florida and Houston. Houston, a perfect 3 0 in American Conference play. Remember, the winner of the conference gets an automatic BCS bid. And Houston, with this game and then a couple of huge ones coming up next in conference between Central Florida and them next week in Orlando and the following week against Louisville. Right now on the field, though, third down and seven for the Bulls. Welch in motion to the top of your screen. White pulls the trigger complete. And they get the first down at the 35-yard line. Andre Davis, the team's leading receiver, squeezing it and making the grab. Houston's continuing to bring pressure. You got to bring pressure until South Florida can bust it. And a nice job there of Andre just getting inside, using that big frame. That's a confidence builder. Just the second first down here for the Bulls. Andre's a guy that's got a lot of passes. Over 90 now in his career. With a nine on that last play. White fires again, complete again to Davis. And Davis still on his feet all the way down to the 34-yard line. He was working against Zach McMillan, one of their better cover corners, a 31-yard gain. Boy, it's amazing what one first down can do for you, huh? Get yourself into a, a little bit of a rhythm there. That was a five hitch and fire. In fact, Coach Taggart was saying it was a few weeks ago when Mike White was running the scout team and gashing the defense that he went up to him and said, hey, you, you want to play this season? Because <laughs> this is looking pretty good. First down and 10. Draw play to Willie Davis. A couple of nice moves and got some yards after contact. A gain of eight on the play. And now the Bulls moving this ball a little bit. This could be a good one that follows us. Arizona State tonight. They've been very, very good at home. Remember, they routed USC. Lane Kiffin was fired very Shortly thereafter, Steve Sarkeesian and Washington got gashed down there. Now, can they leave Tempe and find a conference road win? That's a big one for Todd Graham. Second and two. Hard running between the tackles by Willie Davis. Running with conviction to pick up the first down at the 20-yard line, a gain of six. And for what it's worth, a confident-looking offensive group right now for South Florida on the field. This Brian. might be the best drive in four games, and that's not any hyperbole or exaggeration. They have not scored in 13 quarters, as you said. And some mix of some run and some pass in that third and seven. Find a way to move the chains as Houston did on their long sustained drive, and then you start to set the edge against that defense. Play fake and wide open out of the backfield. It's Martin, the big fella, rumbling inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal, so they finally let the big dog hunt. That's 316 coming right at you. <laughs> Coach, give me the ball. Give me the ball. Coach Taggart saying every single week, Lawrence Martin, the converted offensive lineman, the one time All State high school point guard. Hey, I'm doing all that blocking. <laughs> Find me a reception. I know I can do it. Give me the ball. And they do just that. That's an excellent, excellent play call. And the big fella getting 320 going. First and goal. Davis in the backfield. They give it to Davis. Great block by Martin. But that defense closing quickly to limit the gain to about two yards. It'll be second and goal coming up. This is as close as they've been to scoring a touchdown in over three games. Look at the dancing bear. He's he's on his toes back here, tiptoeing around. He comes around. There you go. Throw your weight around. Get those pads down. Hey, you feed him once in a while, and he'll do a little work for you, right? It's the beauty of college football, man. You <laughs> see, especially with the different personnel, all the different styles that come in all different shapes. That's fun. Second and goal for South Florida. White. Touchdown! The dam has finally broken. McFarland with the touchdown reception, their first in over 13 quarters. Their first offensive touchdown in a little over three games. And 
Coach Eggert said, hey, when we do score, and it's going to happen, I want to see you guys celebrate. And the true freshman, Mike White, pretty authoritative on that drive, a different quarterback than the one we saw in the first quarter. And maybe the beginning of something good and something new for USF. Mike White, the true freshman, leading the way. It's 14 to 10 on his first touchdown pass of the season in his career. Hey guys. Hey, hey. glad y'all made it. Sorry we're late. Did you run into traffic? No. Just had to stop by the house to grab a few things. Mm. You stop by the house? Uh huh. Yeah. All right, whenever you get your stuff, run upstairs, get cleaned up for dinner. You leave the house in good shape? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Second field. Yeah, sure you did. Introducing AT&T Digital Life. Personalized home security and automation with limited availability in select markets. Oh, oh. Oh. Greg's cries for help are pretty loud and clear. Help. But try as he might, he just can't seem to get what he's asking for. Mayday. Not like with DirecTV. With DirecTV voice control, Greg just says, tune to ESPN, and he gets tuned right in, lickety-split. Looks like finding some sports sure is a lot easier than finding that motorcycle he was attached to. Search and record with just your voice. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Two unbeatens are ready to battle. We don't bring the noise. Hey, I just moved my car insurance to the General. Took advantage of some discounts and saved a nice chunk of money. Their monthly payments are really affordable and I chose my own due date. No wonder the General has a 97% customer satisfaction rating. Okay, let's go for a ride. Affordable car insurance from the General. Get an anonymous free quote and choose your due date. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time. Itchy Scalp meets Selsen Science, your history. Selsen Blue Itchy Dry Scalp gets to the root of dandruff and hydrates with five intensive moisturizers. No itch. It feels great. Selsen Blue Itchy Dry Scalp, science for your scalp. Using constant contact email marketing helped me grow my business so I could open up a second shop. And their event tool makes it easy for me to register new customers for our local charity ride. Sign up for your free trial at constantcontact.com. Mike White throwing the first touchdown pass of his career and of the season. And there's his parents who made the trip from Fort Lauderdale watching on the Watch ESPN app, looking at his recent highlight and his touchdown toss. <laughs> Gotta love technology. Going to the game is a, a different kind of fan experience now. There's uh, Mike and Anne Marie Wright, uh, proud parents. No doubt his sister also making the trip. And this is his first start. And, uh, Hey, the future looking good for him and his team right now. Down by just 14 to 10. He actually made his last six passes in a row. 61 yards. Ayers going to take it out. Ayers found an alley. Ayers all the way out near midfield, pushed out finally at the 46-yard line. Back to Scott Van Pelt in the studio, Scott. MJ, thanks, man. Time again for the AT&T All-American Player of the Week. Jordan Lynch of Northern Illinois. BCS a year ago, still clean. Threw for a touchdown, ran for a touchdown, caught a touchdown in last week's win over Eastern Michigan. New procedure here. To vote, visit ESPNAllAmerica.com. Back to Mark and Brock in Houston, where they're going up and down the field as we thought they might. Oh, they sure are. The meter's running, partner. Greg Ward in the ball game now, quarterback. Quarterback run, and a lot of variety of quarterback run for Ward. So Houston changing up the tempo a little bit. They fake the fly sweep, and he's going to pass. Complete all the way down to the 24 to Marcus Ayers. How surprising is that? He's the running guy, right? Well, that's called the tendency buster there from Doug <laughs> Meacham, offensive coordinator. Yeah, been a lot of quick game, a lot of quarterback run. That's well-designed, well-conceived, and tremendous throw and catch. 
Greg Ward coming in by design. They scripted it this way. Ryan Jackson in the backfield beside him. Ward going to take off this time. Straight arm but tackled in the open field at the 27-yard line by Johnny Ward. No relation. There's a flag down as well. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number 24 of the defense. Tell you have to distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. And that's true freshman on true freshman. The offensive player can get away with it. And any of my defensive buddies always hate that rule that they can just swipe and stick <laughs> their hands in your face gear, but you can't do it defensively. And the 15 yarder there from Ward. Hey, brought the, uh... I'm glad you brought that up. I never thought of it that way. Oh, you got a bunch of uh, defensive oh, they, players. Oh, they don't like swear it. Swear it's not a good rule, huh? Yeah, always protecting them offensive players. <laughs> Just not right. Lord out of Tyler, Texas. Keeps it after the fake. Staley on his feet. And Collard brought down. No flag on the play. He's tackled at the six, about three yards short of the first down. Luke Sager came perilously, perilously close to right there, Brock. There's a big John Stead clothesline, yeah. but I don't think any headgear. What are you saying about protecting those offensive players? Second and three. On the sweep. Touchdown, Jackson. Hey, Mark Houston's pretty good mm -hmm. offensively. I mean, they've got a lot of weapons in their arsenal for offensive coordinator Doug Meacham. You saw Farrow earlier, and as you said, Jackson's the guy that can really, really go. You've got two different quarterbacks. You've got so much to prepare for. And even though there's two 18-year-old true freshmen with O'Corn and Ward, as this season's moved on, they've really taken hold of this offense, and they're difficult to defend. Even in their one loss against BYU, the extra point, good. Scoring points was not a problem or an issue. They scored well over 40 in that loss. Serving notice that they're a force in the American Conference. This is the Quicksilver Cashback card from Capital One. It's not the limit the cash I earn every month card. It's not that I only earn decent rewards at the gas station card. It's the no games, no signing up, everyday rewarding, kung fu fighting, silver lightning in a bottle, bringing home the bacon cashback card. This is the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, everywhere, every single day. So ask yourself, what's in your wallet? Love drama? Tag a friend in that old photo. <gasps> Where's her busy hair? <laughs> Hate drama? Go to cars.com. Our dealership reviews help you get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. Lewis never smiles. <laughs> French the rainbow! Taste the rainbow! Verizon innovators are combining a network of underwater sensors and artificial reefs that actually make our water cleaner, giving sea life new life, because the world's biggest challenges deserve even bigger solutions. Powerful answers. Verizon. Don't let unfresh pitch ruin your game. Next time, use Right Guard Extreme Fresh. With 72 hours of uncompromising freshness, it's the antiperspirant that changes your game. Right Guard for the win. Three types of hotels for every type of trip. Save up to 20%. Plus, get 1,000 rewards points when you book at bestwestern.com. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by... The Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Cars.com. Get the right car without all the drama. Cars.com. All drive, no drama. And Skittles. Taste the rainbow.
Look at the University of Houston Hall of Fame. Some great luminaries. Carl Lewis, the 10 time Olympic gold medalist, Case Keenum. And that trophy belonged to Andre Ware, one of our co workers at ESPN. Won the Heisman Trophy back in 1989. 21 to 10. The Cougars leading here on Halloween night. Houston's next game is going to be next week in Orlando against UCF. <laughs> Might be one of the construction workers working on the uh, new stadium they're putting up for the Houston Cougars. Are you serious? You can't hey. remember your favorite costume, by the way. Uh, I saw. I, did you finally come? I asked. You. I think it was just a basic Batman, oh, but it goodness. wasn't the one that came with all the nice abs like the ones you can buy now. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. This is Chris Dunkley. Dunkley out over the 25 to the 26 yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for Mike White. Let's take a look at the Tostitos BCS standings. And Alabama still at number one, of course. Oregon usurping Florida State by virtue of their win last week against UCLA. Well, we've gotten to the games in November that everybody's going to remember. Oregon, Stanford. That's a week from tonight. Miami, Florida State, Texas. And Baylor there is going to face a gauntlet with Texas Tech and Oklahoma. We're going to learn a whole lot about many of those teams in the top ten. It's about this time everybody panics. What if they go undefeated? What if they go undefeated? And every single year, seemingly, this month it starts to separate. And those teams start to separate themselves from one another. Tice on the run. And uh, we saw Stanford last week defeat Oregon State in Corvallis, the highest ranked one loss team in the Tostitos BCS standings Oklahoma State uh, unranked by every computer which is a little bit of a, an anomaly a strange thing but uh, and I'm really curious the team just down the road in Waco I'm really really curious to see Baylor who has been so electric speaking of Houston's trying to stop them with their multitude of weapons Baylor has just been phenomenal with Bryce Petty they're running the gauntlet though the tough part of their schedule coming up White completes the pass to Shaw to the backfield. Let me get back to Baylor. Do you think that Baylor is the real deal, or do they fall on the other side of counterfeit? Well, here's the nice thing. Number one, the conference is not what it's been in years past. You don't have the elite quarterbacks in this conference that you've had for many, many years. Their defense is better than it's been. Mm. Remember with RG3, they could not stop anybody. And they're playing some better defense. That potent offense in the mix of the run and the pass. I'm really anxious to see if they can weather the storm and have the depth with their system, the depth to survive those three difficult weeks. Third and three. Quick slant incomplete, intended for Davis. Broken up nicely by Thomas Bates. And it's fourth down coming up. You see the adjustment there? You see what Bates did? It was a third down earlier. Got, got that drive going. This time he closed down the cushion. He didn't allow the big fella to cut him off. He used his speed and quickness. It's really been the story of this game. And coming into it, it was obvious. You've got the bigger, more physical, the team that wants to grind it out in South Florida, and a Houston group that David Gibbs, defensive coordinator, said how many times to us yesterday, we're little guys. We fly all over the place. And that speed is one out more often than not. Body's punt back to Payne. And Payne with the fair catch at the 20-yard line. The Cougars leading 21 to 10 when we come back. Introducing the Rack Roll Down, the lowest prices ever at Rena Center. We've rolled down prices on your favorite brands throughout the store. Everyone's pre approved for our new lower prices, so hurry in and save like never before at Rena Center. Farmers presents 15 seconds of smart. So you want to drive more safely? Stop eating. Take deep breaths. Avoid bad weather. Get eight hours. Turn it down. And of course, talk to farmers. Hi. Hi. We are farmers. Bum, da, da, bum, 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 bum. It was the lady named Judy who walked out the door with a wicked Christmas list that fell down to the floor. A Microsoft Surface tablet. With Office 2. A two in one Sony Vio Tap 11 PC. For Lou. A powerful LG G2 smartphone. That's some hot tech talk. Now her nieces and nephews have holiday treasure. They'll be like, yo, Aunt Jids, you're like the best auntie ever. Great gifts like the new Surface at your ultimate holiday showroom. Best Buy. Oh, what do 
wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're such a handsome gentleman. Mm -hmm. I feel so safe in your strong arms, my love. <laughs> so is it true? Red Bull gives you wings? Yes, it's true, but I didn't have any, my dear. <laughs> Saturday, bitter in-state rivals fight to stay at the top of the Big Ten. The Wolverines' explosive offense aims to take flight at East Lansing. Gardner, touchdown. But the relentless Spartans' defense... Pressure, hit hard, scoop, score! ...looks to take home the Paul Bunyan Trophy. College Football Saturday, presented by K Jewelers. Michigan, Michigan State, 3.30 Eastern on ABC. College football lives here. Heat Nets at 8 Eastern. Spurs Lakers at 10.30 tomorrow. Hey, a pair of Pac-12 battles tonight and tomorrow. First, Halloween treat on ESPN at 10.30 when the Sun Devils face a tough road test at the Cougars. Then Friday at 9 on ESPN2, Trojans heading to Corvallis. Well, they'll need to slow down Sean Mannion and the Beavers. College football primetime, Arizona State, Washington State tonight at 10.30 p.m. on ESPN and USC Oregon State Friday at 9 on ESPN2. And speaking of Washington State, Doug Meacham, a uh, disciple of Cougars head coach Mike Leach. What a receiver screen complete to Ryan Jackson. Jackson blew a tire, lost a shoe back at the 37-yard line. O'Korn with a nice pass. And I love what Doug Meacham said yesterday. We talked about some of the balance and how they've had more balance here than Mike Leach's teams have ever had. And he said, well, we define balance a little differently. To us, it's not our run-pass numbers. Balance in this system, something Mike Leach taught him, is about how many different guys touch the ball in different places. And we're seeing that evidence tonight. A 23-yard gain and an incomplete pass. But this uh, University of Houston Cougar team much more balanced than some people might think. Well, but. I think you're going to see this change in the years to come. Part of that's protecting a true freshman quarterback. Mm. That's exactly what O'Corn was coming into this season. In fact, he only started one year of high school. Just his senior year. He committed to this school without starting a high school game there yeah. in Fort Lauderdale. He committed in June 2012 going into his senior season. That pass complete into the boundary, but by that throw, you can tell he can make a lot of those throws to pass complete to Maxwell. Pickup of seven, third down and about three. It's been the story of the game here. Houston has been very, very consistent on these third downs, has eaten up a ton of time, had the longest drive of the season because they've gotten a third in very manageable situations. Neither tackling or coverage, South Florida can't get off the field. Horn going to try and run and tripped up sacked. Back at the 45 yard line by Tevin Mims. So that defensive front, which Houston was very wary of coming into this game, Brock, uh, did a nice job there. Well, they're big, they're athletic. This is not Willie Taker. It was very clear to us yesterday. You know, he came and inherited a program that was not dearth of talent. And Mims was a Texas kid, University of Texas, his first two years, transfers to Navarro College, junior college, comes into play. You have Florida transfers. You've got a lot of talented kids. In some ways, some misfits have got to find some accountability and identity, and that's what he's trying to build. The kick is going to be down at the 19-yard line. Coach Taggart says, I tell my players, when you walk into my office, you are entering the no-excuse zone. Back after this. I sense you've overpacked your stomach. Try Pepto to go. It's Pepto Bismol that fits in your pocket. Relief can be yours, but your peanuts are mine. Dr. Pepper 10, the manliest low calorie soda in the history of mankind. Bold flavor. What's better, eating your Halloween candy now or waiting till later? Now! Why? And how does eating lots of candy make you feel? It makes me feel like... Something tells me you've already had lots of candy. It's not complicated. Now is better. 
Happy Halloween from the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Mayday. Thank you for pressing the Mayday button. How can I help you? Whoa, who are you? <laughs> I'm Amy, a tech advisor for your new Kindle Fire. I didn't realize I get a live person. Yep, we're here 24 seven. We can draw on your screen and even show you how to use different features. So I can just press the Mayday button and you're here to help? Hit Mayday and I'm coming to the rescue. Amy, I like you. Aw. <laughs> Introducing the revolutionary Mayday button, only on the new Kindle Fire HDX. We've got a job in New York City. Hey, Ron, who's driving? It's okay. It's on cruise control. He says we're all gonna die! Ah! Ah! Welcome to 24-hour news. Aren't you the guy who lost his job to his wife? I bet we beat your ratings. Ah! Stop saying ooh! Where's the map? Look at the monitor. Where's my legs? I don't have any legs! Ah! Anchorman 2, the legend continues. Under the lights in Houston, Texas at Reliance Stadium, you're watching college football primetime served by Applebee's. I'm Mark Jones alongside Brock Heward. Haley Hartung down on the field. And Willie Taggart's team looking at an 11 point deficit. And the true freshman quarterback, Mike White, who's making his first start tonight, looked pretty good a couple of drives ago, but on the previous drive, uh, Brock, they made some adjustments, Houston, did defensively. It seemed to slow them down a little bit. Don't give up easy completions if you're Houston. Make them earn everything. The one touchdown drive, played a little bit of zone, and Mike White had some patience to find the open receivers. This is the little game that Houston's playing defensively. How aggressive do you want to be against the young quarterback? given time pass caught by Sean Price as we go back to Scott Van Pelt in the studio Clark little conference USA action on Halloween and Charles Ross puts it on the ground Zach Orr from the mean green in North Texas scoops it up Halloween in Denton happy start through the first quarter all right Scott pick up a 14 on the play Good poise and patience out of White. Just the two interceptions as a state champion a year ago. Did an excellent job really taking care of the football. Hands it off to Shaw. And Shaw plowing forward for about four yards. Jeremy Farley making the stop on the play. And watch this as well. See how much time on this play clock. It's an offense like Houston. Really important to keep those guys on the sideline. And this is a ball control. Want to smash mouth. The background Willie Taggart had at Western Kentucky with Jack Harbaugh. Then went and coached for Jim Harbaugh. Out there at Stanford for three years. The terminology. You can see the wristband. Lots of long verbiage plays. Streamline tonight. Simplify it tonight. But over time they sure hope to build this thing around a freshman quarterback. Second and six, White. Little bootleg action under heat and sacked back at the 22 yard line. There is a demonstration of that speed, lethal speed. Derek Matthews moving in to make the tackle. Over 300 tackles now in his career. We've seen him a number of times attack the fullback, and this time, well, that's a B line. That's well done. Contrast that with what we've seen from South Florida's tacklers tonight. Mm -hmm. They're reaching and grabbing, not him. Now Derek Matthews, he puts his face mask right on the sternum of the young quarterback. He's a good player. Undersized for a middle linebacker, but a very sure tackler. Arguably the best player on defense. Third down and long, 12 to go. White looking to set up the screen, and well, that thing was blown up before it even got off the ground. And he threw it into the ground. That's all you can do. Good look there at David Gibbs. Yeah, he likes that pursuit on that second down play action pass. I promise you that. Son of Alex Gibbs, longtime NFL offensive line coach. Gibbs does not lack for intensity. <laughs> you think? South Florida trailing by 11. Damian Payne back at his own 33. It is Chabani Punt. 
That's going to be down at about the 44 yard line first down and 10 coming back the other way for Houston. Uh, Brock we talked about it at the top of the show two big ones coming up but so far as, as coach uh, Levine has said that we want to take care of business now. He talked to us about how on the plane ride back from Rutgers it didn't they had to get to 30,000 feet right then one of the assistants <laughs> handed out 10 laptop computers to the coaches then they started studying South Florida. Yeah, there's no looking ahead. You, you can't afford to do it here. Coach Levine, you know, he felt that five and seven from a year ago. He made some changes in year two. Remember, this program was 13 and one. You've seen Case Keenum a few times tonight in our broadcast. They were the, remember, they were the BCS busters. That was an all-time high. Lots of expectations a season ago. They fell flat. So they really take every single week very, very seriously. Done an excellent job at this point. That pass complete. Right near the first down at the 45-yard line of USF. Ryan Jackson on the reception. In some ways, it helps to have such inexperience. These young guys don't know. John, John O'Corn has no idea, right? He, he, he's, <laughs> ignorance is bliss with a true freshman at times. Hands it off this time down to the 43-yard line. That's Ryan Jackson. Well, when he committed back in June of... 2012 uh, a lot of the Twitterverse around the University of Houston started tweeting in O'Corn we trust a lot of high hopes for this quarterback coming in hands it off to Jackson and Jackson brought down behind the line of scrimmage they're going to lose about a yard on the play O'Corn four and one as a starter Let's see if Aaron Lynch can get going defensive end here. He's on the right tackle of Houston. He's one of those kids that needed the accountability. He was a freshman All-American in Notre Dame, number 19 on the edge, getting better and better every single week. Let's see if he can get a good rush here in a passing situation. Out of the backfield complete. Farrell made a nice grab, but brought down short of the first down by about two yards. Looks like they're going to think about going for it here. Greg Ward comes into the ball game. He led them to a touchdown the last time he came in. They're two of five on fourth down this year. And the Bulls stop him short. They stoned him for a loss of about a yard. Mark George with a form tackle, Brock. That was a frustration tackle. That was, I missed one in the red <laughs> zone earlier. I just missed one on third down. I've been reaching. I've been guessing. I've had my head down, and not that time. That is form tackle 101 from the strong safety. Look at him. Look at him hunt him up. That's perfect. That is textbook. In the day and age, so much conversation about safety and tackling, and can you still hit people violently? Now, that's well done from Mark Joyce. Ooh, move out the way. <laughs> and USF taking over on downs now from their own 36-yard line. You can see it, right? Enough's enough. I missed yeah. too many of those. I'm just going to keep my fundamentals. I'm going to keep my eyes up and finish that tackle on fourth down. Wants to seize a little momentum here going into the locker room at half. Right. Hands it off to Shaw. Shaw stopped up after a decent gain. Every time Shaw gets stopped, it looks like he's wanting a little bit more, like he feels like he feels he's close to breaking it. Remember, he's had three 100-yard rushing games this season. He's averaged over 100 yards rushing in his five games. Got knocked out early with a hamstring injury against Cincinnati. But he is by far their best runner, their most explosive player. If he can break one of those tackles, he sees the green grass ahead of him. Bootleg. Pass tipped and incomplete. So it's third down and six. Adrian McDonald there, who's characterized by the coaches as maybe the best ball hawk defensively on a defense that leads the nation in turnover margin. Illegal Flag formation. Down. Five players in the offensive backfield. Penalties declined. Third down. 27 takeaways, plus 20 on the season. 
You want to know how you pro provide a soft landing spot for a true freshman quarterback play that kind of defense. And that's that's why the instincts to know and see the play action pass and then the awareness to nearly nab that one. USF two of seven on third down tonight. Make it three of eight complete to Davis in a first down. South Florida with one timeout remaining. They're working against Walker on this play. One more look. Good protection. Perfect protection. Opportunity to step up in the pocket. And you see a little connection here between White and Davis. Higher level of efficiency in this passing game than you've seen, seen all season long. You saw the look of confidence on the countenance of Mike White. And the coaches say he's got a little bit of swag to him. It might be growing here with some of these completions. He's looking downfield. And White throws it away. Stops the clock with 1.39 to go. Remember, their place kicker. And there's a flag down in play. Has made three field goals of over 50 yards this year. Marvin Kloss. Holding. Number 12 of the offense. 10-yard penalty. First down. Are you thinking field goal or touchdown here, Brock? What are you looking at if you're USF? No, you've got plenty of time here. You're looking to avoid those negative plays. That's two penalties now already. That's a holding call on Sean Price. But you see a quarterback, and this is one of the things that was maybe most encouraging about Mike White. The play's not there. The screen pass, throw it in the ground. I know it's frustrating, but you throw it away. The first down play action pass to receiver out. That's it. It's not there. Throw it away. Good to play another day. Billy Davis in the backfield. Price in motion. Now sets on the right. White throws a bullet incomplete. Should have been caught by Ruben Gonzalez. And it's incomplete. Second and 20. That's a good sign. When that ball is coming out and surprising those wide receivers, there's no hesitation. That's a play you got to make. What do you mean surprising the wide receiver? Well, I don't think they're used to seeing an accurate pass <laughs> coming at them on time this season. Fair enough. Must I remind you, six touchdowns coming into tonight in seven games, the fourth starting quarterback. And this is exactly what Willie Taggart said Mike White was doing to the scout team. He tried to set up the screen, and it's tipped down at the line of scrimmage. B.J. Singleton got one of those big paws on it, and it's third and long. 27 takeaways, three interceptions from this defensive line. I was joking with their defensive staff and said, boy, you better get ready. Everybody's going to come study you. <laughs> They're all going to want to know what you're doing down here, study you this offseason, probably come and visit you in the spring. And there's nothing magical, just tremendous effort and speed, and then the awareness of everybody defensively know where that ball is at all times. Oh boy, a little motion by South Florida on the right side of that offensive line. Ball start, number 70 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Quintarius Eatman. And that one hurts because you get a place kicker that can knock it through from 55 yards. That's right, I mean, you're nearly in field goal range. You have a false start. You have a holding penalty. You have a drop. You have another false start. Seven penalties today. Total of 55 yards for South Florida. And they run a draw. Short of midfield, Willie Davis stopped up. If you're Houston, you got to burn a timeout here, and they will. Well, Houston will get it back with fourth down coming up for USF. Well, Willie Taggart said he was looking for guys, Scott Van Pelt, to show up and show out. Back to you in the studio. Coming up, Land Rover Halftime Report. Kind of a skinny slate this week, so all eyes will be on Tallahassee. It's Florida State, Miami. Mayday telling you it's not just about Jameis Winston. That defense is pretty rugged for the Knowles. And Brian taking a look at the other counterpart, Stephen Moore. has got to do a better job protecting that ball. It's going to be valuable on Saturday night. We'll see you in, what, we got a minute and change? Minute 24. All right, Scott. Hey, what do you think about that Florida State Miami game? I mean, can Florida State leapfrog Oregon with a very, 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 very <laughs> impressive win well, against Miami? Well, remember, Oregon will have Stanford then right. four days later. So even if they do Sunday night, we've got a lot of ball to play. 
Willie Tagger, we've shown him a number of times tonight, former all-everything quarterback himself. Talk about that it factor. Do you want to know what the it factor is? Go back and watch Jameis Winston pregame against Clemson. Can't put in the words, go watch him. Go watch him lead as a redshirt freshman, that team, that night in that venue. That is the it factor, and he's got it. That's pretty unique. Damian Payne watches it bounce out of bounds. Undefeated ACC rivals clashing on ABC Saturday Night Football. Number seven, the Hurricanes. Number three, the Seminoles. The battle in Tallahassee, it is going to be turned up with that downtown get down in the shadows of Tennessee Street in Tallahassee. And a look at some of the quasars on display for the teams. Yeah, we'll be Jazz heading Winston. down. And we'll be heading down to see Johnny yes. do his thing. And UTEP taking on Texas A&M on Saturday night in College Station. What about Missouri? A little bit of a surprise this year. First down and ten for Houston. Over the middle complete. And brought down at the 20 yard line. That's Daniel Spencer. He's been kind of quiet here in this first half for Houston. Their second leading receiver. Looks like they are content here. Mm, it's surprising. surprising. Yeah. yeah, two timeouts, up tempo group. Gonna let it wind down all the way to two seconds and then snap it. Farrell. Now don't tell Farrell you're trying to run out the clock. Nice run. Picked up the first down and then some. 29 seconds to go with two timeouts, and uh, looks like they're not going to use any. Wisely throws it away. 11 seconds to go in the first half. Never known Houston offensively going back to the Jays of uh, Jack Pardee when they ran the run and shoot here and John Jenkins. I've seen them sling that ball deep into the fourth quarter when they were up by a comfortable margin. Well, they know they've got many <laughs> possessions in the second half, and South Florida has done a decent job here. That front four, especially when you were backed up as they were, and what most coaches will do is they'll kind of use that grounded. first play. Number five in the offense. Quarterback was not outside of the pocket when he tried to throw the ball away. Grounded. Kelly puts the ball at the spot of the foul, but lost it down. Second down. Yeah, that was a bit of a delayed call, but I think mm -hmm. the right call. I don't think. O'Corn ever got himself outside the tackle box, but typically, Mark, what you'll see is that very first play of the drive. That hits for 10 yards, 12 yards, then you'll see them ramp up that tempo. Mm -hmm. Instead, South Florida, when they have tackled well in this first half, they've limited the damage. Well, the Bulls still in this ball game, down by 11 points in a first half that saw them finally end their scoring drought. Put a touchdown for the first time in a little over 13 quarters. An offensive touchdown. Coach Levine there on the sidelines. Watch the face here. Watch the face here. Hey, watch the face you're going to have Coach Levine at halftime say, let's let's sharpen this up a little bit. Special teams been a little bit leaky. Defensively, they played very, very hard. They give up the one drive that South Florida executes. Offensively here, there's been some missed opportunities. Some work to be done in the second half. Well, that's going to be the end of the first half. Coach Levine said, hey, on a short week, we're not going to try and reinvent the wheel. As for... South Florida. Well, it was a different story. Willie Taggart said we need players to show up and show out. And let's go downstairs with Kaylee for more. Thanks, Mark. Coach Mike White, one half of play now under his belt. What do you make of his performance so far? Uh, I think he's doing some good things for us. You know, um, I thought early in the game he was a little nervous, and uh, 
he didn't make some motion and shift that he should have called but um, I think that's just part of being nervous ready to play but he's doing some good things throwing the football well for us. You told me before the game you thought he could spark this offense we saw an efficient drive that brought you guys into the end zone after those long 13 quarters before it what does he need to do to do that again. Well I just got, he's got to keep doing what he's doing for us in the passing game and we got to do a better job running the football I think if we can get the football run the football a little better it'll make it easier for him. Thank you coach. Thank you. All right, thoughts, thanks a lot, Kaylee. 21 10, Houston with the lead over USF at halftime. We're going to go back to the studio with the Land Rover halftime report. Scott Van Pelt, a fourth starting quarterback of the season. Maybe four is enough. Back to you. A couple of uh, freshman quarterback fellows, a big stage, Mark May, Brian Greasy alongside. You expect to see some nerves, but hey, the Bulls haven't had a whole lot to cheer about. And they're down in this one by 11. But let, let's hand out a little, it's, 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 can, it's a, a night for candy. Trick or treat, let's hand out some treats. What do you got for me? Absolutely. You know something? If you haven't scored an offensive touchdown since September 28th, and you're <laughs> Willie Taggart of South Florida, you haven't scored in the last 13 plus quarters, you bring out your secret weapon in the red zone. That's right, six foot three, 316 pound, Lawrence Martin. You use him on first downs where he leads the fullback, you lose him on running plays, but you know what? It's Halloween. Let's give him a treat there. right here. There's a big the man. fella right there gets the first down in the red zone. What else can you ask for? It's not a trick, it's a treat because the big fella is a secret weapon and they go on in the score the first touchdown in over 13 quarters. That's a big man. When, when, look, when you haven't scored and Coach Taggart's tenure there, it got off to as rocky a start as you possibly could dream of. Look, they fought back. They beat a Cincinnati yeah. team that we saw yeah. win last night. They get in the end zone here or on the road against the Houston team that, that they're not expected to beat but you finally find the paint so that has to help I think he's got to be encouraged by Mike White and what he's yeah. been able to do in this game he's developed a little bit of confidence you saw a late throw there in the first half where he threw it in a tight window and they made the play he's got a little bit of a rapport now with Davis a wide receiver so I think Willie Tiger can take that away from the first half I was surprised to see this up-tempo Houston team that, like, I mean, mm -hmm. they averaged 42, so they're exactly on their average, but surprising to see them not go up-tempo. They scored three plays to start the game, and they just sort of elected to sit on it there before that. Had a couple of timeouts they could have wasted also, and I was surprised also. I thought they'd go vertical with the football just before halftime. I think you got to keep your foot on the gas pedal through Houston. That's what got you here, right? Well, and that's what they are. That's who yep. they are. That's what they do. They like to get it, go, play as many places as they want, but they're content to lead by 11 for the moment. As we continue here, Land Rover halftime report, looking at the big game of the weekend. How big game though is it really experts out west expect that home team to win and win by a lot what's Miami got to do to give themselves a shot we'll discuss it as we continue step aside it's time to feed the coach all right hey, come coach. on let's get the stage like a boss. Challenge your friends at Cornhole and win some really great prizes visit hdcornhole.com mine was earned orbiting the moon in 1971 Afghanistan in 2009. On the USS Saratoga in 1982. Once it's earned, USAA auto insurance is often handed down from generation to generation because it offers a superior level of protection and because USAA's commitment to serve current and former military members and their families is without equal. Begin your legacy. Get an auto insurance quote. USAA. We know what it means to serve. Hey. Need a tuck. New Axe Hairstyling, because first impressions count. your hand if you've got savings whiplash you know from car insurance companies shouting save 500 bucks over here no save 300 bucks over here wait save 400 bucks right here with so many places offering so much buck saving where do you start well eSurance was born online raised by technology and majors in efficiency so they're actually built to save you money and time and whiplash eSurance insurance for the modern world now backed by Allstate click or call so I was reeling her in, and that fish was that big. No, it's only that big. Oh, I gotta find myself a nice country girl already. Oh, on that thing? Yep, on FarmersOnly.com. Wow, she sure is pretty. And she likes to fish, too. Boys, I found myself a date. 
Gotta go. I'm telling you, that fish was this big. What's the name of that Dayton site again? Farmersonly.com. You don't have to be lonely at farmersonly.com. Welcome back to the Land Rover Halftime Report. Our first chance to see a star in the making, Jameis Winston. Winston unloads to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Winston takes off running. Florida State on a roll. Winston looking in zone. Another strike, another touchdown. He got away from the sack. What a remarkable Houdini job. He has become a sensation. That he has famous Jameis in the spotlight as game days in Tallahassee in advance of the big game between the two top 10 teams, the Canes and the Knolls. I spent some time down in Miami with Duke Johnson. We'll learn why he likes to wear number eight and the special relationship he's got with his mom. Special relationship a father has with a new son as well. Fresno State quarterback car, Gene Wojciechowski, bringing us that piece as well. Your Dr. Pepper 10 conference showdown. And, and guys, we know the Jameis Winston story, though it is relatively new. It's, it's pretty interesting, Brian, in this game, this matchup against Miami. Here's the freshman. We feel like he's the known quantity. We feel like we can trust him. Meanwhile, the quarterback, Stephen Morris, down at Miami, this is a senior, a guy that had a lot of high hopes when the season started. Has he regressed? You know what? I think he has. And when you go back and you look at some of the tape, you can see that it's because of his decision-making. He's just failing to read defenses and protect the football. And if you go back and watch, especially the game against North Carolina, you had some crowd noise. You're going to have crowd noise in Tallahassee. Sometimes your tackle is not going to be able to get off on time. You're going to have to deal with this. You've got to recognize it, see it, manage a bad situation, throw the ball away. Don't try to do too much. It seems like he doesn't want to give up on plays, wants to always make the big play. And you can see here, look at his feet. His feet aren't even on the ground. And he's trying to throw this ball down the field. Just not a good decision. Later in the game, he's already thrown three interceptions. Now you're going to roll out on third down and try to throw it to where? Where are you going to throw this ball? Throw it out of bounds and live to fight another day. These are the decisions that Stephen Morris has really been struggling with, and a lot of it has been on third down. And when you look at third down for quarterbacks, that's your money down. You can see the comparison between Stephen Morris and Jameis Winston. There is no comparison. This is the biggest difference between these two guys. And make no mistake, with Stephen Morris, Miami is winning because, in spite of Stephen Morris, they're winning these games in the end because of their running game, not because of Stephen Morris. And this Florida State defense that will be lying in wait. I was reading some of the newspapers in advance of it to go visit with Duke. Look, they, they've got him circled. They're, they want to make him beat him. How good is this Noel defense that they've got? They're outstanding. If you look at Jeremy Pruitt, their first-year defensive coordinator, he's done a phenomenal job with this defense. They've got tremendous athletes up and down. But here's the key. I think they're a much better defense this year than last year without all those NFL's future stars because they played better as a team. They go get the ball. LaMarcus Joyner, terrific cornerback. You've got Christian Jones, a linebacker, and Telvin Smith, a linebacker that do a tremendous job. They're going to make them one-dimensional. They can stop Duke Jackson. And in my opinion, he's one of the top five backs in the nation when healthy. They can make this Miami football team one-dimensional, and they're going to make Stephen Morris have to beat them. This is the number one pass defense in the land because they're extremely well coached. They've got great athletes, and they like to pressure the quarterback. That's the one thing about Stephen Morris. He's going to be pressured in this game. And when he's pressured, that's when he makes a lot of mistakes. He's not a type of quarterback that you can get in his face and you can knock him around that he's going to have success, particularly late in the game. You have to keep his jersey clean against this defense. Ain't going to happen. That Noel defense over the years, they've had some monsters in the trenches, linebackers as well, certainly some DBs. You think Joyner sets the tone for that whole defense? It seems to me he does. There's no question. He just brings a level, uh, an attitude, a toughness. When you see him in person, he's not the biggest guy, but he plays big. He'll get up and be physical he, against your team, Maryland, right? He's yep. Stephon Diggs. Yeah. Then he comes and plays Sammy Watkins. I mean, week after week, he plays the best receiver. They're enormous underdogs, Miami is. And, I mean, that, that tells you what, what the folks out there are thinking. It's, there's no emotion involved in that. That's a straight bottom line play. Do you give Miami any shot in this? I, not really, because the way they played, they've been, they've been behind teams by double digits four times this season. They've been behind in the fourth quarter twice. If you get behind this Florida State team like that, it's over. Forget it. Katie barred the door. The game is over because they like to take their chances offensively, Florida State does, and they like to knock your lights out early. And if you look at this team, their last game that they played, the entire defense sat out the second half. Mm. Fresh legs. If you're that good offensively that you can put enough points up early and your defense can rest the second half, 
Look out. Miami's got to shorten the game. They have to shorten the game, find a way, and then take the ball out of Stephen Morris's hands and run the ball with Duke Johnson. Look, when they had to beat Wake Forest, that's what they did. They yeah. said, get in the end zone, eight. He did, and that's why they were able to beat Wake Forest. But you're right, uh, Carolina and Wake back-to-back, -back, and th those teams are not, are not as good as the Florida State team. They will have to play on the road on Saturday night. At home, Houston, John O'Corn, the freshman. Kenneth Farrell. He finds the end zone in Houston, halfway to the road. So he'll be 21 10 at the half. This halftime report is presented by Land Rover, above and beyond. Sport, Land Rover, above and beyond. Lewis never smiles. Why won't he smile? the rainbow taste the rainbow flying is old hat for business travelers the act of soaring across an ocean in a 300 ton rocket doesn't raise as much as an eyebrow for these veterans of the sky however seeing this little beauty over international waters is enough to bring a traveler to tears we're putting the wonder back into air travel one innovation at a time the new American is arriving University of Houston has joined the new conference, Hakeem the Dream Elijah Wong. But I'm so jazzed about our new Tier 1 status. The University of Houston is ranked as one of the top undergraduate schools in the country. The University of Houston is ranked the number one entrepreneurship program in the nation. University of Houston, number one. This halftime report is presented by Land Rover, above and beyond. On this Halloween night, Louisiana Monroe visiting Troy Colton Browning, guy that really splashed on the scene last year when they beat Arkansas. We didn't know Arkansas's wheels were going to fall off their bus, but this guy can sling it some and right on time. A Jalen Holly breaks a tackle, well, broke a tackle early. That's that's easy, easy pickings. Later in the first, it's. Centarius Donald off the read. He takes it in, and Monroe up on Troy, 21-7 on the road. And Rice, North Texas, in Conference USA. North Texas gets a win here. They'd be bowl eligible. Rice is 6-2, 4-0. and Might have snuck up on some folks here. Ball on the deck. Charles Ross drops it. Zach Orr scoops it. And that's as easy as you're going to see. North Texas up 7-2. We didn't start a baseball joke, but the baseball season ended last night, so let's just keep it honest here. Taylor McCard there to Turner Peterson. Touchdown, Rice up 9-7. And more. Ball fake. Ball fake. That's a dime right there, Grease, to Jordan Taylor. Well, and remember, one of, one of the two losses for Rice was to Texas A&M. So they're, they're a good football team. Antoine Jimerson, though, unimpressed. You guys throw it. I'm going to run it. Wow, he carried out six men, uh, uh, two men in from about six or seven yards out. Rice in North Texas, entertaining game going on there in Conference USA. Mike White, Mike McFarlane, after they hit that gigantic tight end that had made a smiling. South Florida smiling, just happy to find the end zone, not get blanked for the month of October. Fairy princess. Just a second. I'm a fairy princess. I'm a fairy princess. 
for your chance to win prizes and a trip to a college football bowl game. Tweet your Saturday super fan photos to College Game Day. Presented by the new Windows. Welcome back. How was everything? There's nothing like being your own boss. And my customers are really liking your flat rate shipping. FedEx one rate. Really makes my life easier. Maybe a promotion is in order. Good news. I got a new title. And a raise? Management couldn't make that happen. Introducing FedEx One Rate. Simple flat rate shipping with the reliability of FedEx. The University of South Florida is an academic powerhouse. Known around the world for life-changing research and groundbreaking patents. For public-private partnerships driving new businesses and creating new jobs. And USF's commitment to veteran services honors all those who are willing to risk it all for others. This is the University of South Florida. This is where the Bulls run. I can't believe you're wearing those shoes. Do they embarrass you? Uh, yeah. Let's see how you do out on the court. Better than you. Maybe I'll put my sneakers in my will. I'd rather take your car. Cars aren't so great, you know. They're a lot of work. Too quick. Yeah, but they're cool. All right, you ready? Yep. Okay, game to 11. Strange disappearances. Ready, ready. Bizarre occurrences. Mutated species. What was that? Some phenomena seem impossible to explain. Now, Discovery will extract truth from the shadows. Whatever it was, it came from above, that's for sure. Uncover the facts you weren't supposed to know. All new, The Unexplained Files. Saturday, 9, 8 central on Discovery. Doubleheader on Halloween night. Marion Grice, if you are not familiar, this is a guy you, you ought to know. He leads the nation in scoring. He's got 12 touchdowns on the ground. He's got six through the air. This guy can hurt you a number of different ways, and that offense, number one's dangerous, boys. He's an awesome player. As you said, very difficult matchup out of the backfield, catching the football. Washington State has got to account for him in the passing game. Nobody's found the end zone more often. Arizona State's got a lot to play for. They got possibility to win the South. Land Rover going above and beyond. And Ryan Jackson doing the same. He goes above and beyond for the Cougs. As I mentioned, they average 42. They're right on pace. 21 10. They lead by 11. Head to the second half. Dr. Pepper 10. The manliest low calorie soda in the history of mankind. Bold flavor. It's okay, that's my TV. It's on layaway? Why layaway? Take it home today at Renaissance Center and pay it off while you enjoy it at home. I sense you've overpacked your stomach. Try Pepto to go. It's Pepto Bismol that fits in your pocket. Relief can be yours, but your peanuts are mine. Don't let unfresh pitch ruin your game. Next time, use Right Guard Extreme Fresh. With 72 hours of uncompromising freshness, it's the antiperspirant that changes your game. Right Guard for the win. Sure. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. 
For 2013, the rules makers and the commissioners have recommitted themselves to player safety. Player safety trumps everything we do in our business. What has to leave the game is those hits above the shoulders. The penalty for it now will include automatic disqualification for players who commit fouls in the head and neck area. In the end, we think it's going to make the game better and safer for our student athletes. Football primetime served by Applebee's here from Reliant Stadium. Houston trying to remain perfect in American Conference play and improve to 4 0. They leave 21 10 at the break. Remember, we are leading you up to Arizona State and Washington State coming up a little bit later. Right here, Mark Jones alongside Brock Heward. Kaylee Hartung down in the field. She'll be joining us in just a minute. Brock, it's Halloween. I thought I'd be one to give you a special hand and uh, quarterback John O'Corn getting a hand from his receivers a very efficient passing number tonight 15 of 20. Yeah no turnovers on the field that's yeah. one of the things that stands out very little run game from either team and it's been the freshman quarterback on both sides of the ball that have been very efficient they've taken care of the ball not not the explosive plays I think we expected maybe a better game than the many here in Houston thought it would be and a credit to Houston in the respect that you know their opponents tonight Another freshman quarterback, true freshman, white on the other side of the field. Uh, they are being well respected because with two big games coming up next, I'm talking about UCF and then Louisville. Houston came out early and established a pretty good tempo scoring on their opening drive in just three plays. Since that time, though, Mike White, quarterback for South Florida, has gotten into a little bit of a rhythm to cut that advantage to just 11 points. Houston will get the ball here in the second half to start. Marcus Ayers nine yards deep. As we take a look at our Home Depot coaching adjustments. Very first play of the game. South Florida comes out in man-to-man -man coverage. That's a true freshman, Johnny Ward, in the slot. And when it's man-to-man, -man, it's pretty easy when they're stationary. But the minute they start to move in motion, look what it does to the communication of the true freshman. And the red shirt senior there, Jaquez Jenkins, they blow it. They don't communicate, they don't pass that off. And man coverage and a bust leads to explosive plays. One of the rare occurrences where Houston got out, and also one of the rare occasions that South Florida played that man to man. A lot more zone after the first play of the game. Deontay Greenberry, the team's leading receiver, coming into action tonight. And with the boundary, the pass complete to number 14, Aaron Johnson. And Johnson with a first down at the 45 yard line. He was working against Lamar Robbins. A nice touch on that pass, Brock, by O'Corn. It's been a lot of the horizontal passing game. I think it's going to be one of the adjustments here in the second half. You have got to challenge South Florida a little bit more vertically. A little blitz coming, and they get to O'Corn and just swallow him all the way back of the 29 yard line. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number 19 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, but an automatic first down. Boy, Aaron Lynch looked like he was already there, and much to the disappointment of head coach Taggart. You know, he does everything right. There you see the five-star recruit that went to Notre Dame as a freshman. But does he get the hands up into the face mask early? And if so, right in full view of the official, going to draw the flag. Aaron Lynch, a big part of that defensive front. That was the first player that Coach Taggart called phoned him up immediately after taking the job and met with him and talked about them getting on the same page. Actually, it was more about Lynch getting on the coach's page. The draw. Jackson with a hole. Jackson on the move. And he fumbled it into the end zone, and South Florida recovers. It'll come back out to the 20-yard line. Johnny Ward pouncing on the loose ball. And USF catches a huge break 
here in the third quarter. And that ball is clearly out there. Good job by Kenneth Durden, 23, 26, Mark Joyce. At the four-yard line, went into the end zone, but the defense fell on it. This results in a touchback. And just as we talked about, no turnovers in that first half of play. South Florida's done a much better job over the last four weeks of creating those takeaways as well. Hey, they won two football games without scoring an offensive touchdown because of that. The great neutralizer, that takeaway. You know, that defense, Brock, you think maybe they've gotten a little bit tired about hearing about how great Houston's defense has been in the takeaway department, leading the nation? Yeah, and I think you saw very early in a number of those calls from Chuck Bresnahan, a more aggressive mindset, really, from both teams. It was as if early in that first half, feeling one another out. Cincinnati throws it vertically. South Florida goes for the blitz. They get gashed, but the takeaway creates a possession here for the offense. Darius Tice on the handoff. Tice with a nice gain of about eight down to the 28 yard line. Stewart making the stop on the play. It was interesting to watch the reactions of those players after that turnover. Uh, there were no pointing of fingers like there we saw early in the game. And as uh, Kaylee Hartung reported. South Florida doing their own ball hawking in the last few games. Second down and about two to go. Line on if he wants it. The toss. They got the first down. Shaw out to the 31. He picks up three down to Kaylee. Mark, count Tony Levine among those surprised we didn't see a turnover during this first half, but that turnover by his offense wasn't what he was expecting in the second half. He told me that during halftime, had a conversation with his defense about the fact that a defense with 27 takeaways had yet to have one today. He was looking for one in the second half, but again, not the one his offense just gave up. He also praised the ability of his defensive coordinator, David Gibbs, to make adjustments in this game after that early South Florida score. He said that's what what makes his defensive staff so special to him. See how they respond here. Kaylee, they're on the field. Mike completes it. Andre Davis brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Those two establishing a little bit of chemistry in the first half. Thomas Bates making the stop for Houston. It'll be second down, about 10 to go. Mike White making his first start. It over the middle to McFarland. And McFarland with another South Florida first down. Mike McFarland, a guy that's been playing well of late. And McFarland moved into the starting lineup this week, supplanting Sean Price. And that really underscores the new environment at South Florida. Coach talked to us a lot about creating a culture of competition. Right? Well, that's the one position. He's got a couple guys that are good players that are pushing one another. Sean Price was a highly, highly recruited tight end, one of the top five in America, number 12. And he's had a little harder time grasping this system of Willie Taggart. McFarland, yeah, he's pushed him. He's taken some of that opportunity and run with it. Pass incomplete. Caught at the 39 yard line by Deontay Welch, who was working against Trayvon Stewart. An 18 yard gain. Pretty good anticipation here. Watch when this ball is delivered. We showed you earlier the drop pass by Gonzalez. I think he was surprised at how quickly the ball got on top of him. And that time, trusting that Welch is going to get to the corner route, thrown early, thrown with anticipation. The offense is supposed to look like in a pro style system. It's been the antithesis of that through the first seven games of the season. They're going to blow this play dead before the snap. A flag down on the play. White was 10 of 18 in the first half. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 88 of the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. It's going to go against Dunkley. Remember before half, it was right here. Just going the other way that they imploded. 
self induced errors, false starts, false starts, holding calls. This is part of the field when you got a tremendous kicker. He's got range up to 55 yards. He just can't afford to go backwards. First and 15, the back of the 43. Martin Tice lining up out of the offset eye. White finds his target down to the 37. And they just crossed into field goal range as demarked by that line we have. Chris Dunkley making the catch. Of course, uh, field goal range pretty liberal for Marvin Kloss, who's connected on field goals, three of them from over 50 yards this year. See that little communication, Andre Davis? Just that little small communication with his quarterback there. That's good stuff. And you really, I mean, you can't state the struggle that it's been this year offensively. Just the chemistry, as you said earlier, just those two getting on the same page. That's a good sign. And second and nine. A little reverse to Dunkley, and Dunkley brought down about four yards short of the first down. Five yard gain on the play. Brock, we talked about, and you had mentioned how Mike White tore up the starters. In a scrimmage as the number three, number two guy a couple of times. Maybe you've been in that position once or twice. Does that really make that much of an impression on the coach when you come out and line it up like that from time to time? Well, when they start the three starters, we're sure. completing about 35%, and uh -huh. it's not looking like it's supposed to. And yeah, you're going up against the number one defensively, and this kid can throw it. I mean, there, there's no doubt about it. He's got a very talented arm. It's the whole rest of the package, the composer that's been pretty impressive tonight. Third and four, trying to keep the drive alive. Incomplete. He fired it a little bit low behind his favorite target tonight, Andre Davis. And you have a very outstanding place kicker in Kloss. Do you go to him here or yeah, do you maybe go for it? No, you got to get the three points here, make it a one possession game. Coach Taggart's upset. Felt like his big target there, Davis, was grabbed on third down. But no, this is no brain. You got to get the three. Made 11 consecutive field goals. Made one earlier tonight from 39. This one is coming from 50. He's already made three of 50 or longer this year, and he's got plenty of leg. And drills this one through with room to spare. Marvin Kloss makes it a one touchdown game. The Bulls making a little bit of noise in Texas. Introducing a car company that's never made a single car. We took the power of a nine-year-old V8 and gave it the impressive handling of Firestone's Destination Tire. Now, moms agree, every milk run feels like a victory lap. So whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Meeting starting now, guys. Night. AT&T knows you don't want anything to come between you and your new iPhone. That's why we're offering AT&T Next at zero down on all new iPhones. Alien invasion is imminent. Tomorrow, we need the best. From the worldwide bestseller, there's greatness in you, Ender. Comes the motion picture event of the year. What do you want me to do? Destroy them. What will be left of the boy? What does it matter if there's nothing left at all? Game over. Ender's game. I'm not the enemy. I'm not so sure. Rated PG-13 in theaters and IMAX tomorrow. Special 8 p.m. shows tonight. I'm your tailgate grill. Your buddy was in such a rush to get into the game, he didn't quite put me out. I see you bought the industrial-sized bottle of lighter fluid. Smart. And if you got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get an Allstate agent and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. Are you in good hands? Two unbeatens are ready to battle. We gonna bring the noise.
visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. The city of Houston aglow at night and inside Reliance Stadium. 21-13, the lead sliced to just eight points now. The Bulls capitalizing and getting a field goal off of that turnover. Kloss now four for four from 50 plus yards beyond this season. Well, Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth will lead the chase field in a critical showdown at Texas Motor Speedway. Only three races remaining until NASCAR's champion is crowned. The chase for the Sprint Cup heads to Texas. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Texas, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. And Brock, you and I'll be hitting the speedway, hitting the highway, and heading to Texas A&M College Station. You driving? Yeah. We got Texas A&M and UTEP Saturday night. I got the coffee and donuts tomorrow. On me. Stay under that speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> Your driver needs a good navigator. Well, this Houston offense needs to get it going a little bit, too. Yes. You don't want to keep an opponent that's struggling. The South Florida has this season, especially offensively. You don't want to get this game to the fourth quarter. That fumble going into the end zone. Puts you up 28-10. Makes South Florida much more one-dimensional. An onside Look at kick. And Houston recovers it. Now, Willie Taggart rolls the dice. Toss, Kloss just didn't quite get the bounce maybe that he wanted to. Adrian Bennett recovering the ball for Houston. And uh, with the change in rules, it's a little bit more difficult to recover it. Kicked it with his left foot. He tries to go left-footed, but look at look at Houston and their awareness. And remember, Coach Levine on that sideline, special teams guy. That's how he made his mark as a coach and working his way up to the head coaching job. His guys were ready for that. There was no surprise there whatsoever. And to be honest with you, five minutes in this third quarter, one score game. You don't like the call? That's too much risk for me. Farrell stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Remember, Kloss. We saw him kick it with the left foot. He's a former soccer player. He was actually born in Germany. His father was a professional soccer player back in Germany. Uh, quite an athlete. Don't call him a kicker. That's fight talk. He bench passes 400 pounds. Pass complete and then some. Greenberry touchdown gets it back just like that. They were working with a short field partner off after the failed onside kick. You said a sentence, didn't you? If, if you're going to pressure and you're going to leave your guys in one-on-one -on -one situations, Greenberry has been too good this season, and you're absolutely right. Risk goes the wrong way on the onside kick. Houston gets what they want. Their best player makes a pretty big play to ignite this crowd. Deontay Greenberry takes it 48 yards. And John O'Corn, the true freshman, puts it right where it had to be. Let number three do the rest. Where's Flo? Anybody know where Flo is? Are you, are you Flo? Yes. Is this the thing you gave my husband? Oh, yeah. Yes, the name your price tool. You tell us the price you want to pay, and we give you a range of options to choose from. Careful, though. That kind of power can go to your head. That explains a lot. Yo, buddy. I got this. Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. The power of the name your price tool. Only from Progressive. Let's see if we can get one past the defense. Hut, go! Here it comes! Where are the numbers? Boom! Get it, spin! Whoa. Oh, nice hands! Check them. Oh. <laughs> Good job, man! Nice. Okay, halftime. Now this is my favorite play. Oh. I'm wide open. I won't fumble. fumble. Don't want to fumble any of these. Share what you love with who you love. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Is up. And it's good. Good. They're great. No pink and silver looks good on you. That was close. Mm. Try our taste.
tasty chicken minis for breakfast. It was the lady named Judy who walked out the door with a wicked Christmas list that fell down to the floor. A Microsoft Surface tablet? With Office 2? A 2-in-1 Sony Vio Tap 11 PC? For Lou. A powerful LG G2 smartphone. That's some hot tech talk. Now her nieces and nephews have holiday treasure. They'll be like, yeah, Aunt Jids, you're like the best auntie ever. Great gifts like the new Surface at your ultimate holiday showroom. Best Buy. ESPN College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Progressive. Comparing rates to help you save. Now that's progressive. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes Cereal. They're great. And GMC. Introducing the all-new 2014 GMC Sierra. Incredible thinking in the form of a truck. I tell you what, our crew doesn't lack for the Halloween spirit. Brock. Pretty impressive costumes there. A frightening night here in Houston. Frightening for the Bulls. South Florida trailing after that Dante Greenberry touchdown run. This is the fifth consecutive, pardon me, the fifth game. He's had over 100 yards receiving. Going over it with one of his teammates there on the sidelines. Mark Jones, Brock Heward, Kaylee Hartung down on the sidelines. Let's see how the Bulls respond here. Dunkley going to take it out. And Dunkley. Collard down at the 25-yard line and back to Scott in the studio. Mark, let's check back in on that Rice North Texas game. Back and forth they go. North Texas had the lead. Rice back out in front until Braylon Chancellor. Let's call this one 65 yards as he picks his way and then shows some speed. Punter, you don't want any of that. That's my name, Chancellor. Three gets six. North Texas leads. Mark, back to you. 28-13, right, 8.53 to go. Marcus Shaw, the deep back out of the offset eye. Walsh in motion. Shaw with the carry and nowhere to go. Let's go back to that touchdown catch, and Brock, what was the key here? Well, when you're playing a true freshman quarterback, John O'Corn, you want to give him different looks. But we talked earlier, first play of the game was man, and they get busted. And this is man free. You bring the house. You see the free safety there, Joyce. And once again, picking on the true freshman. That's an excellent play call. It's taken care of man-to-man -man coverage. And right now, Deontay Greenberry cannot be covered by a true freshman. It's always a chess match. Getting your guys in the spot to take advantage of well, that defense is vulnerable. And a call that had a little bit more risk than I think I was comfortable with. Second and ten, incomplete, dangerously slow. And a flag thrown as Andre Davis tried to make the catch. The player's shaking up down there, getting up slow for Houston. Pass interference. Number 10 of the defense. Stewart. Penalty results in an automatic first down. And that's going to go against Houston. And Zach McMillan, meanwhile, Stewart going to come off the field. I've gotten his bell rung there, Brock. Yeah, you can see he's attacking that football and he runs square into 205 pounds of Andre Davis. Yeah, he got there a little bit early, wrapped him up. From the 36, first and 10. A surge by that offensive line that time. Got some movement. And a four-yard gain by Marcus Shaw. Not to forty. Hey, Shaw coming back from that hamstring injury. What do you make of his performance in this first game back? Well, what you make of it is these free defenders, as you just said. These free defenders, be it safeties or linebackers, that are coming unblocked at him. A little better push. You're absolutely right. But ultimately, he's a guy that you've got to get out into space. That's where he is going to be at his very best. That's why he was averaging over 100 yards a game before the significant hamstring injury. They've got to find a way to cut him loose a little bit. It's 10 rushes for a total of 20 yards. Mike giving time and finds his target at the 44-yard line. It was Jordan Duvall going low to make the grab. And a first down for USF. Say this about Mike White as well. He may have missed some shifts and motions early. 
as you heard Coach Tager talk to Kay Lee about going into halftime. <laughs> Sometimes just breathing and getting that snap can be a challenge and for a freshman his first start. But outside of those early drives and maybe some of that miscommunication, he knows where he wants to go with the ball. Very little hesitation. 16-yard game, first and 10 from the 44. Play action and open and caught at the 25-yard line. Another first down. Deontay Welch picking up 19 that time. And Shaw made a nice block, Brock, to help out. And Coach Wells, offensive coordinator, O-line coach, said we got lots of good play action pass, but not been able to call it because we haven't been able to protect. And protection doesn't just come from the five offensive linemen. It takes those tight ends and running backs, and you see the senior there, Shaw. He may have avoided the weight room more than Taker wanted him to, but he's more than willing there to chop it down the blocker, chop it down the defender. He gave it up. Davis in motion, and it comes to a set. False start. Number 20 of the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, they've had about three of those tonight, and uh, Coach Taggart very involved in the play calling. Trying to get this thing smoothed out with the first start of his true freshman quarterback, Mike White. They've had 10 penalties tonight for 80 yards. First and 15 now at the 30. And another whistle. And another flag. First charge time out of the half. South Florida. They're going to pick up the flag and say that South Florida got their timeout in, trailing by 15 with just under 16 minutes to go here. Pardon me, six minutes in the third quarter. And coach giving it to his team there. Well, a pair of Pac 12 battles tonight and tomorrow. First, a Halloween treat on ESPN at 10 30. Sun Devils, Arizona State taking on Washington State, then at 9 on ESPN 2. On Friday, the Trojans head to Corvallis where they'll need to slow down Sean Mannion and Brandon Cooks and the Beavers. College football primetime, Arizona State, Washington State tonight at 10.30 on ESPN and USC Oregon State Friday at 9 on ESPN2. Hey, remember this game? USC went in ranked number one in this one, right? Up in Corvallis? Yeah, and don't you remember Sanchez no. throwing the wristband right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lasting image, unfortunately, in that orange in that stadium at night. USC has been a haunted house. First and 15 and another flag and more Ball procedure. Start. Number 76 of the offense. Five yard penalty. What, what's down. causing this, Brock? Well, this is this is a true freshman quarterback, and there's a good look at offensive line coach, co-coordinator Walt Wells. He's in the ear of Coach Willie Taggart. And it's the fine line you walk between not wanting to overload. You've got all this offense. Spent three years at Stanford. You got this deep playbook. And yet you can't get to it because of that, because of self-inflicted errors, four false start penalties. You see him looking at the wristband. If they've quote unquote simplified it for him, why is he always looking at that? Because there's a lot of verbiage there. <laughs> First and 20. And they get this play off. But Shaw is tripped up for a gain of about two or three. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking they've, they've said they pared it down for him, but things seem a little bit disjointed. And there's another good look at Derek Matthews. Been very, very active tonight. Yeah, Coach Wells was saying at Western Kentucky, it was called blue too. And all of a sudden, Coach Tager comes back from Palo Alto and it becomes shift to green right, 92 lead. What happened? Why did they have to expand? It was a whole lot easier with two words. With that depth of the playbook, it will come. They're trying to take some baby steps, but you see it going backwards tonight. Second and 16. <laughs> Wide open, and it was dropped. Incomplete. Thomas Bates knocked it loose from Mike McFarland. They can't afford to have those kind of errors. And once again, it's all anticipation. That's good stuff. Mike White feels the blitz. The ball's on McFarland in a hurry. You've got to secure that. But give some credit to a ball hawking secondary. They've not gotten their turnovers tonight, but they've ripped and they've clawed, and a good job there by the senior Bates to force the incompletion. And this is danger zone. Third and 16. They're already in field goal range for Quas. 
It's going to be blitz time. You try to knock them out of that field goal range. I think you got to keep everything in front of you here. Threes don't beat you tonight. South Florida. And the Bulls call another timeout. They're second of the half and down to one. Taggart played for Jack Harbaugh at Western Kentucky and has that Harbaugh system entrenched in his coaching. Back with more after this. College Football Saturday, Michigan, Michigan State on ABC. How do they make Starburst taste so juicy? The Juicy Dragon? They show funny videos to a giggly dragon. He laughs so hard that he cries super juicy tears and they put him in the Starburst. A juicy dragon? Starburst, unexplainably juicy. Okay, ladies, grab a knee. I got somebody I want y'all to meet. He's a real leader. And he's gonna help us turn this thing around in the second half. Aflac. Aflac. Aflac, 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 Aflac! That's what I'm talking about! Aflac, Aflac. You feel me? Yeah! yeah. Bring it if you get sick or injured, we do everything we can to help you get back in the game. Aflac, an official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Introducing the Rack Roll Down, the lowest prices ever at Rena Center. We've rolled down prices on your favorite brands throughout the store. Everyone's pre approved for our new lower prices, so hurry in and save like never before at Rena Center. Get NBA League Pass and watch the excitement of the new season wherever you want. You'll get live NBA games on your TV, computer, tablet, and phone. LeBron makes an incredible play. Watch the incredible action anywhere. Check out a free trial of NBA League Pass October 29th to November 5th. For more information, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com slash NBA. Tim, he's going legal. Looks like I got a whole lot of work to do. You know why I pulled you over? Uh, no, no, I'm not sure. Uh, what, what, why is that, sir? We need to upgrade. We need to make it bigger. We gotta make some more moonshine. Moonshiners. New season starts Tuesday at 9 on Discovery. Celebrating its ninth year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3.2 million in scholarship monies. Back to the action in a pivotal, critical third down conversion situation here for USF. Got to limit the big play here for Houston defensively. Right underneath and took a little bit too much off of that. Incomplete for Willie Davis. And fourth down coming up. Kloss in the field goal unit coming on. Is that one on the quarterback? Yeah, yeah, that expression says it all. It's zone coverage. You expect that from Houston on third and 16. No need to blitz. These field goals aren't going to hurt you. And this is one of the first little breakdown and some fundamentals. You let all those zone defenders run offs. Right call. It's almost, in essence, a screen without having to call the full screen. They just don't execute. Cross is connected from 39 and 50. This from 49. Low snap. They got it down in time. And Kloss is Mr. Automatic, or as his coach calls him, money. School record 13th straight. Freshman calls. Coors Light answers. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Show it off, America. Show off that belt you replaced. Show off the fuel pump, the oil change, the upgrade. You did it. There are a lot of places you can go to do it yourself, but there's only one place that can help you do it right AutoZone. Because even the pros know parts are just part of what we do. We have the advice, the instructions, we even loan tools. So show it off, America. You did it right. Get in the zone. 
AutoZone. Well, some great matchups this week as we look at the Applebee's weekend menu. Which one of those intrigues you the most, partner? I'm the, I know where you're going. Yep. I think you've heard it from just about every analyst that's been out there, either on the road with Florida State or when they've been home. And this is a different Florida State. You will hear every one of them talk about it. You'll hear it game day Saturday. Because for many years, well, Florida State's got all the talent. We saw Florida State, remember? Yep. We called their loss a season ago against NC State. Ran into NFL personnel people going to that game. It was NFL team number 34 behind Alabama and the 32 in the league with all the talent they've got there. But I'm really convinced their quarterback is the difference maker. He is the X factor. He's the guy that makes the whole group go. His swagger contagious. You think they end up one of the top two for the BCS championship game? Do it after the return here. Talk about it. Ayers on the return. Takes it out to the 31 yard line. Florida State, Oregon, Alabama, part of the top three group there at the Tostitos BCS standings. I come back to you again. Yeah, I, the, the challenge is going to be the, the two in front of them. And Oregon's going to have Stanford. They're going to hope and they're going to wish. Okay, who wins Oregon Stanford then? I'll start there. Well, I think Oregon does. I think Stanford's a very beat up ball club. Mm, okay. And they lose Ben Gardner, their captain, one of their forces in that front seven. You know, I think Oregon beats them even down there on the farm. First down and 10. Ward in the ball game, and Ward throws a little bit low incomplete. So back to the Tostitos BCS standings. Are you saying that? Alabama, pardon me, uh, Oregon and Florida State both win out. And if they win out, who plays Alabama? Just as soon as that comes out of my mouth, <laughs> I'm remi I remind myself of what I said about an hour ago, and that is this month of November has been wacky and crazy. Right. It'll shake out. It does. But it's hard for me to look on paper right now with the matchups and the schedule for those teams down the stretch and find a loss. Ward hands it off, and Jackson barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. I can't believe. Speaking of that Miami Florida State game that the Seminoles are a 22 point favorite. I'm a resident of South Florida. I've seen some strange things happen in that game over the years. And I know Miami hasn't played that well in the last two weeks squeaking out wins over North Carolina and Wake Forest. But you got to believe it's going to be a little bit closer than that. I would agree. Third and ten for Houston. Florida's defense trying to get off the field here. Ward scrambling just gets it off and incomplete harmlessly at the 40 yard line. So good pressure up front by Richard Client. And Houston will have to punt. That's a pretty big three and out. And I understand you're a two quarterback system, and Ward's been very, very good, even effective here tonight, but very effective a week ago. South Florida had a good plan on that three and out. They've done a nice job of stopping this run, not letting that run out for Houston. Now let's see if that offense doesn't hurt themselves. Giuliani with his third punt of the day at Dunkley. Back for the punt. And he fields it at the 25, a 44 yard punt. So we've talked about Florida State, number three, Oregon, number two, Alabama. Vinny Sinceri out. Do they drop off a little bit? Do they remain number one when it's all said and done, you think? I look at their remaining schedule. I can't find a loss. I know LSU is coming to town, but it's Mississippi State. It's Chattanooga. Auburn's better, but man's a man. They're not there. And then the SEC East is so beat up. I, I, just, I can't find a loss for Alabama as we sit here today. I have a hard time finding one for Oregon. And we're going to learn about Florida State. As I said, I would agree with many of my cohorts. This is a different Florida State team than they've been in the past. First down and 10. Mike White. Into traffic completes it forward. Progress going to be marked at about the 31 to Deontay Welsh. One last thing. Let's put a period on this. Tostitos BCS standings. Is Alabama the true, quote unquote, true number one team in the nation? Are they the best? I know they're ranked number one. Do you think they're the best team in the country? I think they are right now. Now, if they had to travel a couple thousand miles and play up in Austin Stadium Saturday. Yeah. Who wins that game I, if they play I, tomorrow? Yeah, I think if they travel to Austin Saturday, <laughs> I, I think I think my money's on Oregon. <laughs> this just makes this game break, right? Every week matters. 
all the controversy, all the yep. conversation, all the debate. It will be played out here in November. It's all about urgency. And a fumble. Loose. Davis put it on the ground. No signal yet. And now USF retains possession. Boy, Willie Davis has given it back to Houston. Oh, punched out right there. It's kicked out. Yeah, that's Boy, big they, Lawrence Martin's big foot, right? They, they strip the ball with their hands and their feet. <laughs> huh? It's his own guy. Look at that. Oh, it's his <laughs> own man. Guard. <laughs> okay. Big play here, Mark. The real point. big play in this game. They get the first down behind the running of Marcus Shaw over the right side of that offensive line. Threet and Quintarius Eatman. When you get a look at number 70, Eatman, right there on your screen, tremendous girth and size. And keep in mind that, folks, he actually dropped 65 pounds as a true freshman. And it was a freshman All-American second team. 6'6", 311 right now. Got a little movement up front. First and 10. Shaw on the toss. Out to the 40-yard line. Gain of about three on the play. Brock, you said earlier that threes, field goals, aren't going to win it tonight. At what point do they actually get it downfield a little bit and, and get that big play they've been searching well, I for? Like, I actually really like these play calls here. You're, you don't have to rush right now. You want to keep Houston and that offense on the sidelines, and you want to put some pressure on them going into a fourth quarter here. Continue to be patient. Now, the bummer is you've already done this. Not only the penalties, you've already wasted a couple of those timeouts on your last drive as well. Leg complete. Price and Price with another South Florida first down into Houston territory. A pickup of 12 on the play. My guess is there's going to be some folks down in Tampa tonight watching this game and wondering, hmm, why wasn't this kid playing a little bit earlier? Right, and some of that has to do with they liked him. They didn't fully know what they had. They wanted to redshirt him. He had a lot of veterans in front. But the decision making tonight, I think more than anything, has really stood out. He knows where he wants to go with the football. If it weren't for three or four drops tonight, he'd be even more efficient. Under a minute to go now in the third. Shaw again and brought down behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss of about two. Jeremiah Farley making the tackle on the play. The South Florida team has won two of its last three games in the American Conference after getting off to a real rough start started off 0 and 4 Did that time change in quarterback position better hurry here look at that play clock already Over the middle complete to Davis again and another first down and a good way to end the third quarter on a 15 yard pass and catch as we move into the final 15 minutes of play Mike White who only had two passes coming into the game tonight trying to put together the upset bid here in Houston when we come back. We've got a job in New York City. Hey, Ron, who's driving? It's okay. It's on cruise control. He says we're all going to die. Welcome to 24-hour news. Where's the map? Look at the monitor. Where's my legs? I don't have any legs. <laughs> we just done went and brought it. Ah! Ron, no! Oh! oh! Anchorman 2, the legend continues. Hey, guys. Hey, glad y'all made it. Sorry we're late. Did you run into traffic? No, just had to stop by the house to grab a few things. Mm. You stop by the house? Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, whenever you get your stuff, run upstairs, get cleaned up for dinner. You leave the house in good shape? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Last-second field goal. Yeah, sure you did. Introducing AT&T Digital Life. Personalized home security and automation with limited availability in select markets. 
There's no such thing as no man's land to me. A man just needs a place where he can be wild and free. Dr. Pepper 10, manliest low calorie soda in the history of mankind. Mm. Bold flavor. Humans, even when we cross our T's and dot our I's, we still run into problems. Namely, other humans. Which is why at Liberty Mutual Insurance, auto policies come with new car replacement and accident forgiveness if you qualify. See what else comes standard at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? control with your index finger learning from you LG G2 there's a couple of reasons Ryobi is number one we have over 50 products that work off one 18 volt battery plus Ryobi offers more value in selection than anyone and now there's new lithium and lithium plus our most powerful and longest lasting batteries ever so you can knock out that to-do list all before kickoff Ryobi One Plus, the one system that delivers more. Available only one place, the Home Depot. Now pick up a special buy lithium-ion drill kit for just $79. The chase for the Spring Cup continues at Texas, Sunday at 2 on ESPN. A look at downtown Houston. And the Houston Cougars leading South Florida 28-16 as we enter the final 15 minutes of play here at Reliance Stadium. I'm Mark Jones along with Brock Heward. Bailey Hartung down on the field in a pivotal and critical game, especially for Houston in the American Conference. South Florida with possession on first and ten. Another nice run by Marcus Shaw. And here's why the game's important. A lot on the line, but first, a holding penalty looks like we have against South Florida. So this will come back. Holding, number 70 of the offense, 10-yard penalty, first down. Houston undefeated in conference play coming into tonight at 3 and 0 and coming up next a trip to Orlando to meet another perfect team 3 and 0 UCF and then Louisville after that for Houston so you know the way things fall now that, that those kind of turn into almost de facto conference championship games so you got to get this one uh, oh by the way yeah <laughs> First and 19 after the penalty. Shaw motions out of the backfield. White finds his man patiently over the middle. And down to the 34 yard line, it's Willie Davis. True freshman making his first start tonight. Mike White picks up nine yards on that pass. Well, one of the challenges that Houston's had is look how clean White's uniform is tonight. Matches his last name. I mean, they cannot get to him with four when they blitzed. He's found his outlets. He knows where he wants to go with the ball. And with the lead here, Houston's a little apprehensive to bring some of those blitzes. Wants to protect against the big play. Great pass and completion to Davis. All the way down to the five-yard line. First and goal for the Bulls. A 29-yard gain. And mom and dad love it. Now this is what we've seen really all game. He's got tremendous protection when Houston plays zone coverage. That's not an easy throw to get over the linebacker. 50 Oliphant in front of the safeties there. This is the ball hawking, the best ball hawking defense in college football with 20 takeaways. I think there's an expectation of that group that, well, this young guy is going to give us one. We continue to play coverage. He's going to give us one. And he's not giving them anything tonight. 19 of 30 passing. And a run at this time. Shaw behind that offensive line. And nowhere to go. Stopped up by Olafa. Well, you can see White's confidence growing with every pass completion. Do you remember your true freshman game? 
my very first start. I didn't do it as a true freshman. I'll tell you that I, I got to sit and watch Big Brother for a season. Right. So many of these guys today at every position across college football thrown into that fire so much earlier. Mike White. 22 touchdowns just two picks a state champion a season ago down there the university school in Fort Lauderdale. Right a lot of hope here I would think for the fan base of South Florida. Well play the drive. White. Almost intercepted. And complete its third down and goal. There was a lot of traffic around his receivers tipped by Adrian McDonald. And that's a no no. You see him patting the helmet. He gives a double tap. First on the helmet, that was a bad decision. Then on the chest, that was my bad. You can't throw it all the way back across the field there into heavy, heavy traffic against a crew that's picked it off already 16 times this season. They haven't run it too well with Shaw. Davis has been his favorite receiver number 81. Which way do you go maybe on this. Well you like 81 you also like your tight ends that was the touchdown pass earlier. You may also be thinking four down territory. They run it. Shaw tried to go up cartwheels and is supplanted brought down at the two yard line. Thomas Bates. Put his hat on him. A three yard gain fourth down. And this is a Sports Center top 10 hit. Hashtag SC top 10. Hashtag ouch. Brought some knock on that one. Fourth down coming up. They're going to go for it. It'll be a one on one to the tight end. The fade. Caught. Touchdown, Bulls. What a grab by McFarland. And the poise of the true freshman was remarkable on that play. Remember we talked earlier about getting to the offense and getting to those matchups and formations. You saw McFarland shift out there very late. Can't throw it any better. Wow. You work that drill. You throw it right to the back pylon. You trust your guy is going to go get it. What touch? He dropped it in between Adrian McDonald and Stephen Taylor. Okay, McFarland, Brock, that's his second touchdown catch of the night. Mike White. Mr. Wright tonight. Bull starting to stomp a little bit. 14's got a little touch and some swag. He loved skiing. He loved skateboarding. So young Tom Sims combined them both, creating the snowboard in a whole new way down the mountain. Uncompromising creativity, it's the way we made the Mazda CX-5. Skyactiv technology combines nimble handling with better highway mileage than any other SUV, including hybrids. This is the Mazda CX-5. What do you drive? Wow, that feels wow. Oral-B Deep Sweep, featuring three cleaning zones that remove up to 100% more plaque than a regular manual brush. Guaranteed wow from Oral-B, number one dentist-recommended toothbrush brand worldwide. I need some candy. Oh, house down the street has full-size candy bars. Adding it to our route. Glad I decided to trade in our old phones. Seriously, even the dog. <laughs> Wait, guys, we've got to stay away from 32 Elm Street. He's a dentist. He's giving out floss. Weirdo. Getting new treats. That's powerful. Verizon. Trade in your old phone towards a new one, like the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 on America's most reliable network. We don't have a team, but we do have the two-in-one device halftime show. Why two-in-one? It's a tablet when you want it. It's a laptop when you need it. It's custom configured by CDW. Is that the only song they know? Sadly, yes. It is catchy. Oh, what a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're such a...
such a handsome gentleman. <laughs> I feel so safe in your strong arms, my love. <laughs> so is it true? Red Bull gives you wings? Yes, it's true, but I didn't have any, my dear. <laughs> You know, for a team that hadn't scored but six touchdowns all year, look at this group. That's the fun that they're having now, and that's the fun, Brock, that is a consequence of finally starting to score and have a little productivity, correct? Well, when you get any life out of the quarterback position, you've gone to the fourth quarterback, a true freshman, pulling his red shirt off. Yeah, and he's provided more than just hope. He's executed at the high level. Here's on the return. Ayers tiptoes down the sideline and pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Scott Van Pelt, Bulls are turning up. Back to you. Yeah, how about it? Time now for the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. Speaking of turning up, it's about that time. College basketball ready to jump. Last year when Kentucky was ranked third, John Calipari said anybody that voted in there, he wanted them drug tested. This year they're ranked number one. It's the third time the proud tradition of UK hoops. They've been ranked preseason number one. First time ever for Coach Cal. They are gross with talent. Loaded. Michigan State two in that poll. Back to you. complete first down reception made by Spencer and Spencer the second leading receiver on this team pick up 13 yards on the play and Brock this is a team leading by five right now but Houston you don't change go quick no 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 you go up tempo you have okay. got to get yourself in the tempo and get the ball to three and four Spencer Greenberry your best players set up the screen the pass complete to Farrell and tackled in the open field by Clyde. Oh, that's going to be 15. Oh, a little extra. Wow, that's going to go against Houston. That's a little frustration there. Farrow throwing the ball in the face. That's big 15 yards right now. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 35 of the offense taunting his opponent. 15 yard penalty, second down. Well, Farrell, a sophomore, should know better. Well, he doesn't like to push a little bit out of bounds, but that contact occurred on the field to play, and then he throws it right at him. That's that's a no-no. Lose -no. composure a little bit. Mm. Get this game to the fourth quarter. Now you got Central Florida. You got Louisville. You've got a South Florida team that scored six touchdowns all year. Now the pressure's turned here a bit to the fourth quarter. You got to still find a way to get your best players the ball right now. And the fourth penalty against the Cougars tonight out of the backfield. Pass complete. And Beetle stumbles forward for about a six yard gain. Out at the 41. Well, can the South Florida defense come up with a stop here? Bulls have seized the momentum here in the second half, outscoring Houston. Nice tackle. This is usually Greenberry time. Underneath it comes, stopped up with the 45, and good gang tackling right there. Short of the first down, a five-yard gain, and the Bulls' defense responding, due in part to that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Farrow there. So on the first series of the game, Houston scored in three quick plays. It looked like it might be a long night for USF. But they stopped the hemorrhaging, and now they'll get possession down by five and a chance maybe to take the lead. A great punt all the way back to the four. Oh boy, it took a fantastic bounce. Rich Liani with a wonderful punt, 44 yards in all. And both teams, both players bumping their gums a little bit. Can Mike White lead them into the end zone again?
Introducing a car company that's never made a single car. Legendary durability. Impressive mileage. Firestone tires. So unstrap the saddle, because these old stallions are ready to run again. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Hey. Hi. New Axe Hair Styling, because first impressions count. Introducing the Rack Roll Down, the lowest prices ever at Rena Center. We've rolled down prices on your favorite brands throughout the store. Everyone's pre approved for our new lower prices, so hurry in and save like never before at Rena Center. The high jump, approached the same way for decades, is suddenly changed forever when a man dares to jump back first. Defying convention is the Mazda way. To give the Mazda 6 best-in-class highway MPG, we changed everything. Engine, body, even the wheels. This is the modern sports sedan. The Mazda 6. What do you drive? Let us begin. You're... Loki, you may have heard of me. That was from New York. I like her. On November 8th, the darkness will destroy everything. Loki, I need your help. Witness the return of an Avenger. Look at you, still all muscly and everything. Thank you. Or the Dark World, rated PG-13, in 3D and Realty, November 8th. ESPN College Football Primetime is served by Applebee's. Vets in active duty military enjoy a free Applebee's entree on Veterans Day, and in part by Firestone. Reminding you that whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Uh, some of the crew kids on Halloween. Gloria and Sophia Jones brought home some loot, I'm told. Mike White, freshman quarterback, Brock. Okay, Jones, <laughs> what do you do if you're David Gibbs right now? I'm, I'm going to dress up as a defensive for... coordinator and <laughs> blitz, okay? Yeah, I think it's time to get this freshman off his spot a little bit. Played a lot of zone here. Let him get comfortable. I think you got to mix it up. On first and ten, they hands it off to Tice. And Tice might have gotten a yard, maybe two on the play. Mike White has really turned the beat around offensively for this USF team. They hadn't scored but six touchdowns coming into the game tonight. He's taken them into the end zone a couple of times this evening. Again to Shaw and Shaw picks up another three, setting up a third and about five. But there's a flag it's down. It's going to be play. again a formational deal, trying to shift, trying to motion, not getting enough guys on the line of scrimmage. I think this is going to come back and sting you once again for South Florida. Illegal shift, number 83 of the offense. All left players weren't set for one second and prior to him going into motion. Five yard penalty. Second down. 13 penalties tonight for 100 yards. And by the way, that's on the quarterback. Okay, that, that's on the quarterback. And as, I mean, I'm hypercritical, but as Mike White gets a little bit older, you shift, you get people set, and then you let that receiver know, hey, you can go in motion now. That tight end not set away from the formation. You try to shift, you try to motion, you try to give a defense some different looks. That's now double-digit penalties. Been a real killer for South Florida. For this one, Arizona State and Washington State. White given time and wide open for the first down. His ace tonight, Andre Davis, with another reception. He picks up 18. These are just zone beaters. Look at the air between quarterback line of scrimmage, and then look at the separation here. That's just zone. I mean, that's just simply too easy. This quarterback is in rhythm tonight. You are not getting and affecting him whatsoever back in that pocket. Now, I understand why Coach Gibbs is not bringing the house and why you're not blitzing. It's all risk-reward because you bring the house, you bust one coverage, or you break one tackle. 
well, then you're trailing in this game. But there also comes a point where you have got to make this freshman uncomfortable. Coach Gibbs' defense has created a turnover in the last 17 straight games, but not tonight. Another flag down on the play, Shaw down. False start, offense. All wow. 11 players weren't set for a second before the motion. By third penalty, first down. It's past being a problem now, Brock. That's their 11th penalty. Pardon me, their 14th penalty for 105 yards. You've got to wonder, okay, let's simplify this. Do you really need to motion? Do you really need to shift? If we're winning those zone matchups, does there come a point finally where you eliminate some of that window dressing because it's just not been effective in killing you? Dr. Shaw in the backfield. Right under heat and sacked back at the 7-yard line. They brought some heat and Steven Taylor got to him. It's up a second and long. It's a sprint right pass. Your fullback's got to cut, got to get to the outside thigh pad and cut that in rusher down. You're on the backup to the backup to the backup fullback. But that's all about technique. You have got to beat the blitzer to his spot. That's the big fella, Lawrence Martin. You got to cut him down and give your quarterback an opportunity to get outside. But there's the blitz that we've been waiting upon. Second and 26. White complete. Boy, put it right where it had to be at the 27 yard line. Mike McFarland, who caught a touchdown earlier, corralled the ball for a pickup of 18. Well, Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth lead the chase field in a critical showdown at Texas Motor Speedway. Only three races left. NASCAR's champion is going to be crowned after that. The chase for the Sprint Cup heads to Texas. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Texas, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. This kid's arm is beating your zone coverage. And I know it's remarkable stuff because he threw two passes coming into this game. <laughs> Four of 13 on third down. Right high cut, but short of the first down. They're short by about two yards to go. 621, one timeout. Punt. Okay, you knew where I was going with that. And White will come out. First time he's had grass on the face mask. First grass stain right there on the shoulder pad. One of the rare occasions they actually rushed four. And got a little impact on the pocket. And look what it does. Creates the high throw. Ooh, that's awfully close mm -hmm. to controlling that ball all the way through contact with the ground. Six point of the night. It's your body. Payne makes the catch. Fumbles it. South Florida recovers it. All the way at the 27-yard line. Big hit by Mark Joyce the jar it loose and the special teams coach which is the head coach can't be happy with that result and the team that was plus 20 on the night in turnover ratio number one in America has not forced to take away and is now given away two. one into the end zone that would have put him up 28 to 10 now you get off the field defensively and now you give it up in the special teams game as well it's amazing how turnovers and takeaways can work Houston trying to remain perfect in American Conference play. They got two big games coming up after this one, but they got to take care of business here. Trying to remain perfect. Wow, 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 wow. Unbelievable. It is just, Brock it, it, it is ridiculous. It is absolutely at this point ridiculous. We talked about them paring it down for the freshman quarterback, the true Ball freshman. Start. Offense. All 11 players aren't set prior to the snap for one second. Can you pair penalty, it? First down. Can, can you pare it down any more than it's been pared down? No. Well, yes, you can. You can just simply line up and not motion and shift. But you're trying to swap and move your tight ends. You're trying to get to some of those matchups. And you're rushing on the motion. Two guys are moving. Wow. And it's just debilitating. A lot of self-inflicted wounds here tonight for South Florida. Back to the 32, first and 15. Sean Martin lining up out of the offset eye. It's Shaw behind Martin. Got a little bit of push up front. For a gain of about three. It'll be second down and 12. Braswell making the stop.
for Houston. It sure feels like this Houston group has been on the field this entire second half. A couple turnovers now. Start to see some of the hands on the hips. You just do a tremendous job to get yourself off the field. You get the sack. And then your special teams puts you right back on the field. The Houston team potentially thinking about a BCS group. The winner of this conference qualifies for a BCS bowl. How about South Florida doubling up the time of possession 36 to 18 minutes. Wow. On the end around, Dunkley had a lot of resistance early and is brought down at about the 27 yard line. A pickup of three. It'll be third down and 10 to go. Now you got 440. You do unfortunately only have the one time out. Are we looking your at kicker, four down? Well, no, your kicker nope. has been automatic. You get the three here. You must avoid the sack. You must avoid the negative play. And no, with four minutes left and the one time out. And as good as your kicker has been, don't go backwards. Sean the backfield. White blows it up, has a man. Caught! Flag! No signal. I think he's going to call offensive pass interference. It was caught by Davis, and they're going to bring this back. Pass interference. Number 81 offense, 15 yard penalty, third down. Wow. He was working against William Jackson on the play. We got to take one more look at this. Well, that was right in front of the side judge. Let's see if Andre extends his arms out to create that separation. Yep, you see that left hand right in front? He'll give you the first one. He'll give you that little arm bar, but watch him extend right there. That's what he's seeing, but wow. wow. I see two players pushing each other and jostling, yeah. no? Boy, that is awfully close with three and a half, four minutes to play in this game. Back to the 42-yard line. They maybe want to get some of it back to get Kloss back in field goal range. On the fringes of it now. White sacked. He took a sack. Something he absolutely couldn't do. And the ball even coming loose. But was he down first? Houston ball. And he's a little wobbly. Tyus Bowser made the hit. And Mike White shaking the cobwebs out, it looks like. Four man rush. Four man rush finally gets home. The ball's clearly out before White goes down. That's, well, that's yet again another true freshman, Bowser, stepping up when Houston so desperately needed that negative play. They get it done. And the first takeaway for the country's best 27 of those coming into tonight. And they get it at the most opportune time. O'Corn incomplete, intended for Maxwell. Working against Durden. We got a flag on the play. What a swing of momentum. Wow. One little left handed push away from this game going the other way with that offensive pass interference against Davis. There's no foul for offensive pass interference. Second down. Let's see. We saw the left hand, the arm bar. That was, well, that's pretty much what was called the other way. We just saw we that sure at the other end. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 19 of the defense. 15 yard penalty. That's Aaron Lynch. Bad time to lose your composure. Long walk over the sidelines for Aaron Lynch. And that moves the ball all the way down to the 35 for the Cougars. Ryan
Ryan Jackson is going to lose a couple of yards on the play. Ryan Giddens making the tackle in South Florida. Remember, they burned a couple of timeouts early in the second half. You back see. in the third quarter, and now with just one remaining, if they're going to try and stop the clock, right, Brian? Yep. You see a first-year head coach from Willie Taggart and his team with a very young quarterback, not understanding that you got to play every single snap. You got to put that negative play, that pass interference behind, find a way to throw that ball away on a sack. And you see some of the undisciplined nature that he's trying to train out of these guys with the 15-yard penalty. There's a handoff to Ryan Jackson. And Jackson, short of that line, we have his field goal range for Kyle Bullard. Bullard is the backup place kicker. Third down. That's seven to go. If the Bulls can get a stop here. They can hold Houston to a field goal. It's still a one score game. Pass complete. And a first down conversion down to the 21 yard line. Number 14, Aaron Johnson on the reception for Houston. That was clutch, an 11 yard game. That's the other true freshman quarterback that's quietly had a very effective and efficient night on the biggest third down of the game. That's a double slant. I think everybody on that field anticipated it going to Greenberry inside. Instead, he sees the separation, couldn't throw it any better. And boy, burning those two timeouts earlier. The double digit penalties, the number of opportunities, especially here in the second half, that South Florida really self inflicted is coming back to bite them here late. Look at that 17 penalties. Wow. 156 to go. Houston trying to keep their record unblemished in conference play. College Football Saturday, Michigan, Michigan State on ABC. It was the lady named Judy who walked out the door with a wicked Christmas list that fell down to the floor. A Microsoft Surface tablet? With Office 2? A 2-in-1 Sony VAIO Top 11 PC? For Lou. A powerful LG G2 smartphone? That's some hot tech talk. Now her nieces and nephews have holiday treasure. They'll be like, yo, Aunt Jids, you're like the best auntie ever. Great gifts like the new Surface at your ultimate holiday showroom. Best Buy. What's better, eating your Halloween candy now or waiting till later? Now! Why? Because it's candy. And how does eating lots of candy make you feel? It makes me feel like... <laughs> Something tells me you've already had lots of candy. It's not complicated. Now is better. Happy Halloween from the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Where's Tommy? I thought he was with you. No. Jack! Tommy? Oh. Don't stop. Keep playing. Here we go. Here's the fun part. Encouragement. Pass it on. From the Foundation for a Better Life. So who's the guy wearing the helmet and a uniform? He's the general. Like in car insurance? Yeah. He just helped me insure our three cars. I got discounts, a great low rate, affordable monthly payments, and the general even let me choose my own due date. Well, that's something I need to do. Well, go over and talk to him. The general's customer satisfaction rating is 97%. Affordable car insurance from the general. Get an anonymous free quote and choose your due date. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the general and save some time. ESPN's coverage of the NBA debuts November 1st at 8. Starts with MVP LeBron and the two-time champs. The Heat taking on the New Look Nets. Then at 10.30, Parker and the Spurs taking on the Lakers. It all starts at 7 with key NBA countdown. There's a look at the picks. Braca. Who's that young guy right there, though? Uh, I don't know who the guy's on the right. I'm going with the Heat in the finals, though. What is this? Doc Rivers effect. The Clippers? A deeper bench. Sterling, the owner? Clippers? Yep. Come on, yeah, Jones. They, they've got a lot more firepower and... Doc Rivers, one of the top three coaches in the game. You're just He'll trying to be different. No, you're trying to be different. Clippers. Le and, and LeBron <laughs> in the post. 
I kind of like Chris Paul. The table. Chris Paul's going to be MVP in the uh, top three MVP anyway. First and ten. O'Corn keeps it himself. Staying down. And goes down. Stops the clock though. Ran out of bounds with 151 to go. Second down coming up. Hey, during the break, look what transpired between the officials and Coach Taggart of USF. I mean, he was on them. Well, he's going to say very clearly here, if you're going to call the pass interference against us on a touchdown pass, then you have got to call it on the other side the exact same action. Second and two. Warren hands it off to Farrell. Farrell squares those shoulders, and they stop the clock. He gets the first down, though. Valid argument when it comes to Taggart or not? Yes, different officials, different okay. sideline, but a valid argument. Now, both those players, you got to find a way to stay in bounds. Quarterback, running back, get the first down, mm -hmm. stay in bounds. Farrell had that almost costly unsportsmanlike conduct call. Five-point advantage for Houston. South Florida with just one timeout remaining. Farrell again. Touchdown, Houston. And that might just do it. And for Taggart and USF, it's going to be a night when they hit the bus a little later of what could have been for them. Well, they'll think about it, but I'll tell you what, you've got to give Houston credit here on this drive, the third down conversion on the double slant, the ability to finish your opponent. They've been so good in this fourth quarter all season long. Outscored their opponents 83 to 26 in this final frame, and they survived a very dangerous opponent and a dangerous game tonight with the two biggest opponents looming in the next two weeks. Farrell with his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Welcome to business as usual on the IBM cloud. A small lab in Berlin is using supercomputing to fight cancer. An industrial city in China is becoming a high tech hub in under four years. Britain's building a smart grid to help cut emissions by 80%. Even an independent studio in Malaysia can produce big time blockbusters. Transforming business through the cloud. That's what I'm working on. I'm an IBMer. Let's build a smarter planet. Uh-huh. Honey, I got this. We got this, right? Dry cleaning done. Gift for your aunt. Done. Today we're going to be talking about your body after baby. Yep, we're done. Okay, let's get some lunch. Yes! <laughs> All right. Yes, honey, all natural, everything. Done. Ah, oh, I forgot to check. Done. On your phone, online, on the go. Wells Fargo makes it easy to get banking done. Lewis never smiles. Why won't he smile? <laughs> French the rainbow, taste the rainbow. He loved skiing. He loved skateboarding. So young Tom Sims combined them both, creating the snowboard and a whole new way down the mountain. Uncompromising creativity, it's the way we made the Mazda CX-5. Skyactiv technology combines nimble handling with better highway mileage than any other SUV, including hybrids. This is the Mazda CX-5. What do you drive? Welcome back, everyone, to Houston. And it's time for tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game. You see the offensive coordinator, Coach uh, Meacham and John O'Corn on the sidelines. Boy, look at those sparkling statistics, Brock. 22 of 27, three touchdown passes, 263 yards. And really more importantly in the big picture, Houston. Yeah, I like the signage. O'Corn, very nice. <laughs> In the big picture, though, they're going to remain perfect, it looks like, in conference play, setting up that huge game next week that you'll see from Orlando between UCF and the Houston Cougars. This is Paul Montgomery on the return. Take one more look at the standings. Uh, 
Houston, should they hang on, would improve to 4 0. South Florida fall to 2 2. But this is where Houston runs the gauntlet now, Brock. UCF and then a game against Louisville, who was defeated by UCF. And both on the road, and they're going to have to play better than they did tonight. It's not a great matchup with Central Florida. Central Florida is a big physical team, a downhill run team. Is that a bad matchup for their defensive front? It's gonna be, it's, they're going to have to be better, much better than they were tonight. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 42 of the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. I mean, this has not been a penalized South Florida team. They've only averaged 48 penalty yards a game coming into this. Wow. Offensive ineptitude, yes. Some challenges of consistency in the other phases of the game, yes. But penalties, they've been pretty good. And 18 of them tonight, just devastating. Back to Central Florida, Houston. Yeah, it's going to be some of this speed again, and they've got to find takeaways. That's what makes this thing go. To win a game tonight where they're actually minus one after being plus 20 this season, quite an accomplishment. They've got to take the ball away much better next week. White comes underneath complete to Willie Davis. True freshman Mike White making his first start tonight. One pass, perhaps just one call that went the other way against them. That pass to Andre Davis. It was ruled offensive pass interference. Would have been a touchdown otherwise. That one complete, incomplete to Willie Davis. That's the one they'll be talking about. Up at USF in Tampa. White 25 of 38 tonight. 305 yards and a couple of touchdown passes and now I, 311. I got to be honest the more we looked at that play in that moment it's mm. got to be egregious mm. doesn't it yeah in that moment of the game I mean to take it out of the players doesn't it have to just be kind of like that replay of indisputable just an egregious error right incomplete for the aforementioned Davis who we were talking about who almost had that touchdown catch were it not for that Offensive pass interference and uh, didn't seem to be anyone gaining an advantage. Exactly. Now, technically speaking, when they look at it, and all the officials and all the conferences look at every call, and that was a big one. And technically speaking, sure, did he extend the arm? And, right. and was he right in front of it? I mean, full view? Absolutely. But in that moment, that stage, the impact of that call, enormous. Head steps up and fires. And that's why this defense leads the nation in takeaways. Trayvon Stewart with an interception. Had one last week against Rutgers. And this one is pretty much done now. Both teams with a couple of turnovers. Coach Levine talked a whole bunch to us yesterday about human nature and not worried about his team overlooking South Florida. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness in number 76 of the offense. This is a penalty of half the distance to the goal line. First down Houston. And I'll chalk up yet another penalty for South Florida. That's against Darrell Williams. But Coach, Coach Levine said they've got their routine. They've got their program. They have enough players here that have bought in. They really get it. And that fumble coming out of half, it put them up 28 to 10. If they don't fumble into the end zone, and I think you make life a whole lot more difficult on Mike White, make South Florida a little more one-dimensional. Instead, they fumble, couldn't get off the field, couldn't generate a great rush in the second half. And Mike White was much, much better, a difference maker that I don't think many people saw coming into tonight. But Coach Levine did what they needed to do. You win, you advance, you get to 7-1, and one, and you set up, as you said, and you've said a number of times tonight, quite a stage down in Orlando next week. Coach Levine is big on communication. Told his players that, hey, you're going to get a lot of fellow students backslapping you. Say, hey, you're great. You're undefeated in conference play. We're going to a BCS Bowl. Well, don't believe the hype. That was his message. And, and it how, worked. And but look how close it was, yeah. though, Jonesy. <laughs> Here's the pass interference. And you Offensive see it, pass interference. Yes, and you see the arm extend. And as I said, it's right, right in front of the side judge. Different guy here, different side, same arm bar, same push. That one gets picked up. Tell you what, Coach Taggart's going to submit that little bit of video we just saw to the well, conference. Well, he could do that, but he also had about 17 other calls yeah. that they got right. Yeah. And those were very painful. Second and 11, and 
Oh, Korn, our player of the game, going to take a knee. Both true freshmen doing a pretty nice job tonight as Houston improves to 4 and 0 oh in American Conference play and setting up that huge game next week in Orlando against UCF. Final score once again, Houston winning at 35 to 23. Happy Halloween. Yes. Go home and get some of that loot that your kids brought home. I just saw the picture there. <laughs> For Brock Heward, Kaylee Hartung, and a talented group of people behind the camera you never get a, get a chance to see. I'm Mark Jones. Trick or treat, Houston. Good night, everybody, from Houston.